Hey, welcome back to the Meadowlands. If you're a St. Louis Rams fan, you may want to close your eyes. This is a frightening sight. Kurt Warner, moments before a game, in street clothes. Hey, Kurt, the Giants are known for a strong defense. You guys are known for a strong offense. Having seen them on film, how do you match up? I think we match up pretty well. You know, I think that uh, we can do some things against them. You know, we're going to have to pick our shots. We're going to have to take some shots downfield. They got a lot of talent over there. It's a good football team. They're solid on both sides of the ball. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to stop their running game defensively. And offensively, we're going to have to hit some big shots on them, I think, to win this football game. Sounds good. Good luck the, uh, good luck the rest of the way. And uh, hope to see you soon on the field. Thank you. Me too. Hey, Pat and John, I think um, State Ram safety Keith Lyle summed up the best. He said, this is going to be a war. It always is. All right, DJ, thank you. And they've just tossed the coin, Jim Fossil, looking to see if we get the ball or we play defense. And the Rams will get the ball. That's Mike March. You know, and I think that's the way they both like it. Yeah. I think Mike March being an offensive guy and, you know, the strength of his team being offense likes to start off likes to get control of the game and start I think Jim Fossil believes in his defense those of you who just joined us welcome to Giants Stadium sold out as per usual been saying that so long right now let's go back to DJ Johnson on the sideline Hey, Pat and John another frightening sight Marshall Falk also in street clothes Marshall everyone knows your accomplishment accomplishments on the football field Trung Kennedy comes in here a relative unknown can you tell us a little bit about Trung uh, Trung is a guy that um, I mean he get uh, he get a lot of yards in, 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 uh, in huge chunks um, you know he's a guy that's explosive he can make things happen I'm um, in this offense he, he fits in for what we want to do with the passing game and our big hitting offense sounds good good luck the rest of the way Back up to you, Pat and John. All right, DJ, thank you. And uh, Mike Bart said yesterday he hoped to have both those guys, Marshall Falk and Kurt Warner, back for the New Orleans game, which is two weeks from now. Tony Horn back deep for Brad Daluiso's kickoff. This is one of the areas that Jim Fossil's really not been happy with is kickoff coverage and especially the, the distance of the kickoffs. and. You know, teams are starting with very good field position this, on them because of that. And this used to be Daluiso's real strength. He had a very strong leg. But here's another short kick. Bounces in front of Tony Horn. And Horn speeds down the sideline. And the Rams do have plenty of that. That thing called speed. Let's look at their offense. Orlando Pace, one of the best at left tackle. Newton McCollum and Adam Timmerman playing with a broken thumb. And Ryan Tucker, the right tackle. Corey Hope, Justin Watson, James Hodgins opens at fullback. Roland Williams, the tight end, and Isaac Bruce. A dangerous group that handled the ball. Two tight ends they open with. Trent Green at quarterback. First and 10 at their own 33. is to Justin Watson very little here's the giant defense and they've been playing extremely well of late the front four Jones Hamilton Christian Peter and Michael Strahan Keith Hamilton has really been playing well Armstead Barrow and Ryan Phillips the linebackers and one of the biggest secondaries in the NFL Seahorn Williams Garns and Dave Thomas Seahorn's first trip back he'll be on Isaac Bruce all day. The handoff is to Tony Horn. Sean Williams. Now one of the things with Marshall Falk being out, they're they're getting to to run more reverses and and run the ball more to their wide receivers. We saw him last week. Oz Hakeem did it. This week they get in early and they put in Tony Horn. Tony Horn is their kick returner and their fifth wide receiver. They sneak him in the game and run a reverse to him. Their fifth wide receiver. They do have some good ones. A bunch of them. And we're going to see their fourth. Ricky Prohl a lot yep. today. And Oz Hakeem plays as much as anyone. Their third. Bruce in motion. The ball's deflected, knocked up in the air. And the Giants had a real chance at intercepting that. Deflected by Michael Strahan. 
And you're going to see Michael Strahan is right here. You see, he gets to push there, and then you get as push as much as you can, then get up in the air. He's working there on Ryan Tucker. Last week, Ryan Tucker had trouble with a bull rush, too, and he just had trouble there. Now, Jim Foster was saying one of the things, you know, we talked about running and play passing and playing good defense. The other thing he says, we have to win the turnover battle. They just lost a turnover opportunity right there. It's second and ten. They're going to have to hurry. With no time left, they just barely get it off, and Trent Green's going to scramble. And scrambles for a first down into giant territory. Right now, for a game break, let's return to James Brown in Los Angeles. Hey, Pat, some of your viewers left this game here to go to your game. Take a look at Philadelphia drawing within three. Little swing pass to Brian Mitchell, his first receiving touchdown of the season. Philadelphia trailing now by three with 2.25 left in the contest to Pittsburgh. Back to Pat Summerall and John Madden. At Giants Stadium, first and ten. The Rams at the Giant 43. And Trent Green drops the throw and is going for a deep strike. And it's picked off by Dave Thomas. You know, one thing that the, that the Rams have is they have an area that they call shots. That they're going to take some shots in the end. Shots mean just a deep pass to score a touchdown with. That was their first shot. They took it to Torrey Holt, and and, and Thomas was right there with him. Like so Thomas was in better position than Torrey Holt was, was to catch the ball. Perfect to him. Last week, Trent Green, 431 yards. Jason Seahorn down here in the bottom. Rigging special so Bruce. That's Justin Watson. To the 40, a pick up a three. Jesse Armstead, proud of his accomplishments. Yeah, they can get fired up. That's that's the thing. You know, we talked about that earlier. About you know, can they run with the ball? You know, and and that's the big thing because if not, they're just going to get a big pass rush. This is the first time that they try and run to a running back. Jesse Armstead, nice in there and staff. So it's third and eight. No score yet. This is interesting. The Giants are in a three-man line. Three-man rush. Green has timed the ball right through the arms of Hakeem. Oz Hakeem couldn't get the handle. Side, when you do that and you and you go to a three-man line and you just rush three. What you want to do, you say it's third and long. That's John Fox, the defensive coordinator there. You say we want to rush three, but we want you to throw into eight. Welcome to those of you who saw Detroit defeat Atlanta 13-10. Baker's punt in the direction of Tiki Barber, who signals fair catch. It goes over his head. And the Rams will down it at about the four. And let's have a look at the giant offense. Flag on the play. Giant offensive line. Lomas Brown, the veteran, Rosenthal, Ziegler, Ron Stone, and Luke Pettigrew. Amani Toomer and Ike Hilliard, the wide receivers. Tiki Barber and Greg Camella, the fullback. Howard Cross. Will open at the tight end. Personal fall, unnecessary roughness. Number 21 of the receiving team, half the distance to the goal. First down. Tiki Barber, who signaled fair catch. You have to stay with it. It was right there when he got. Whoa! Did he hit a left to the yep. body and a and a and a right a rabbit punch in the back? Hit Jeff Robinson. But the thing is, the ball was down on the four yard line, so half the distance only takes it to the two, so it's only a two yard penalty. But there was still no reason for Tiki Barber to do that. That's Ron Dane, the ball carrier, who gets maybe two yards. Lorenzo Styles made the stop. Here's the Ram defense regular. Wistrom, DeMarco Farr is back, Ray Agnew, and Kevin Carter, who's also had some time on the bench, but is back. Todd Collins, London Fletcher in the middle, Mike Collins, uh, Mike Jones, the three linebackers, Dre Bly, Dexter McLean, Lyle and Bush in the secondary. This is a place that people feel 
is the Rams' Achilles' heel. The weak spot, the defense. Harry Collins back in the end zone, taking a shot, going deep, got a man over for it. Ike Hilliard had moved ahead of the defenders. And, and that's not a bad place to take a shot. If you're going to take a shot, you just can't take it where you have a chance to score a touchdown. You just can't wait until you get to the 30 or the 20-yard line going in. If you're going to really take shots to loosen up a defense, you have to take those shots all over the field. Sean Payton is the is a play caller for the Giants, and he's a young guy, but he's a very aggressive play caller. Third and eight there, Sean Payton. And now after you call that shot and you don't get the shot, then you have to get something here to get a first down, or at least to get the ball out to the five-yard line to give your punter room. Flag on the play is... Play the game, offense. At the distance of the, goal, the, distance of the goal line again. Two penalties against the Giants inside the five led netted about three yards. Yeah, and they were and they were both dumb penalties. And Tiki Barber shouldn't have done what he did. And 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 you have to be able to to get in the huddle, get the play call, get up and get it run. I mean, there's no there's no excuse for that. You're the home team. Noise isn't bothering you. Third and ten. Collins out of the shotgun in the end zone. Is caught by Amani Toomer. Now the ball's loose and the Rams are headed for the end zone with it. Well, this is like the Monday night game. Yes, it is. Dexter McLean. The Rams' extra point team is coming. I didn't hear any whistle, did you? No, I didn't hear a whistle. I didn't see anyone point that he was down. Bernie Kukar is the referee. First off at the one yard line. First down at the one yard line. I don't know how they arrived at that. I think he went out of bounds oh, at the one did. yard line is what it was. See, see, here's what happens right here. See, Amani Toomer has the ball here. And you see as he starts to come here, the ball is just coming out before he goes down. Yes. You see, and it goes right in there to lie. And then it comes off of him. And then they just pick it up and they're running. And then, and then uh, Gray Bly was knocked out on the on the one yard line. Now this is up. Jim Fossil is one for eight in challenges. This is one that you would think New York challenge. Is challenging the ruling on the field. Challenging the ruling. I, I don't. I can't see how they're going to win this one. They, nobody blew a whistle. Well, you and know, the they're saying that that wasn't a fumble. I mean, it is a fumble. Right down there, there's no official coming in that I can see that was saying it was down. And then, of course, you know, he's knocked out at the one-yard line, so I don't know what they're challenging. It looked like, looked like a catch. You know, did he come down? I mean, that's the first thing that Amani Toomer catch the ball. Took a couple of steps with it. Have control of it. And then it's a fumble. Number 81. You see Toomer come in there, catch the ball, both feet in the ground. The ball comes out before his knee is down or any part of his body's down. Look at the guys just walking around there, though. I think what happened is the ball sort of nestled on top of Lyle. Again, like the After Antonio, came out, yeah. Antonio Freeman yeah. thing on Monday night. And you, remember, you have to remember when you're playing football that... It's a, the rule is always you play from the time the ball is snapped until the whistle blows. Until you hear the and whistle. If you don't hear a whistle, you just keep playing. You see, there's no official here in the shot at all. We were looking to see if uh, an official was coming in to blow a whistle or pointing down, and you don't see an official. Now, this official here, he didn't point to the ground. See? No, no. So that didn't stop the play. So there was no there was no whistle. There was no official pointing to the ground. I guess the challenge would have to be if they were saying that he was down, Amani Toomer was down before he fumbled. Amani Toomer might have been injured on the play as well. Oh yeah, Ronnie Barnes, the, the head trainer for the Giants, was right out there. It looked like he was out on the field with Amani Toomer before they even got down to the one yard line. Mike Cherry, the backup quarterback, over talking with him. There's Ronnie Barnes on the left. 
in the stocking cap. Yeah, he was he was right there when Amani Toomer went down. He was out there before the. I think the Giants will lose this one. But I don't I don't I don't see what part that they could win. I don't you know because well, they the could first get the thing. Ball. No, no. I mean, what part? I mean, the catch. The thing is a catch. It's a fumble before he's down. Yep. And it's picked up here. And then now you say, why is the ball in the one yard line? You're going to see that right there, Dexter McLean gets yep. knocked out. In fact, it looked like about the two yard line. After reviewing the play, the play stands as called. Not one that you'll hear a lot of applause for. At Giant Stadium. And now Jim Fossil as a challenger this season is one for nine. And the Giants lose a timeout as well. First and goal at the one for the Rams. Trent Green, touchdown. Roland Williams, the tight end. And the Rams, who had trouble scoring early, score early. Well, you know, you talk about a momentum changer. The, the Giants, you know, they complete a pass to Amani Toomer, and instead of getting a first down, they get a fumble. And then the Rams, instead of being on defense, they have the ball in the two-yard line, and that is the perfect time to go play pass. Jeff They're all Wilkins. bunched in there, and he just faked it. Jeff Wilkins for the extra point. He continues to recover. And again, let's go to James Brown in Los Angeles for a game break. Pat John, take a look at Philadelphia and how they executed. Third down, no timeouts remaining in this one here. Incomplete as Pittsburgh kept him in check there. It was complete, but they kept him in check now. No timeouts remaining. Keep in mind now they've got to get the special teams units on the field. Clock is ticking down. They get it set up. Take a look at David Akers, a 42-yard field goal to try and tie this game up. And with three seconds left on the clock and time running out, they tie it up at Three Rivers. It's not at 23 going into overtime. Back to Pat and John. They looked very calm about the whole thing, didn't they? Well, you know, Philadelphia's been in that situation yes. uh, quite a bit this year. Yeah. Remember the, the Redskin game almost went into an and overtime? Then last week, the game we did. Yeah, the game we did. Dallas went into an overtime. So, you know, their experience, I mean, that's the way Andy Reid, I think, coaches. Let's just hang in there until the end of the game and see if we can steal some of these things. Jeff Hall will kick off. For the Rams, Bashir Livingston. Back deep with Omar Stockmeyer. Short kick. He didn't do anything special to Livingston. At the 30. Good coverage by the Rams. Sean Moran made the stop. Early game notes. You see that Minnesota defeated Arizona 31-14. Dante Kulbeck pepper back in stride. Baltimore beat Tennessee. First time they've ever lost at home. I watched a little of that earlier, and that was a that was a real hit and battle, those two. A real, a real blow for the Bears as Jim Miller left with a torn Achilles tendon. He's out for the rest of the year. Levingston, who returned the kick. You'll see he got that left shoulder right there in that left rib area. Mm -hmm. He's holding the ball in the right, and they're they're checking that area, which is where the where the shoulder popped him. And there's some backs that never get that shot. You know how they always they're just at the point of contact. Remember, Tony Dorsett was probably the best at that. Instead of taking that blow, you know, boom, right there in the front, just turn the shoulder and and take glancing blows and never. Never those heavy blows. That was a heavy blow that Levinson just took. Barry Sanders wasn't bad. <laughs> yeah, those kids who were never hit and tagged. Yeah. Are the guys who were always hard to get a hard shot on. Here's Collins out of the pocket. Chase throws. Incomplete. Tended for Howard Cross. I think one thing the Rams have to, I mean, I think one thing that the Giants have to watch out for is they don't try and play like the Rams. You know, sometimes you do that. I mean, you're, you're a running team, you're a defensive team, you're a play pass team, and you come out, and you, you know, you say that they score a lot of points, so we have to go out 
And you have to go out and score a lot of points, but you have to play your football. That's Lorenzo Styles that they're working on the Ram on the sideline. Second and ten. Pete Mitchell in the game, and Tiki Barber gets the carry and gets very little. The St. Louis defense, and there's a reason for this, I think. In the first seven games, they were giving up an average of 33 points and 365 yards, and there's the reason right on the left side of your picture. And this is Bud Carson's third week back. They brought him in as a consultant to sharpen up this defense, and he has sharpened up this Ram defense. Collins deep. Up the middle incomplete. Picked off in the air for a moment. I think this is going to be the Rams ball flag on the plate. However, it is the Rams ball. Wait, you know, the, he's getting protection. Kerry Collins is doing his part yeah. of the job. That was Joe Juravicious. The ball came loose. Dre Bly picked it up. Face mask penalty against the Giants. Rolling on the field. It was an interception pass on the run back. Five yard face mask on the New York Giants at five yards to the end of the run first off. Ooh, I don't know that you're a vicious now. now here's one they should challenge. Here's one they should challenge here. I bet you he doesn't. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. He has to challenge this one. I mean someone upstairs has to see that it can't be a fumble because it wasn't a catch. There's the face mask violation. Yeah, but that won't even count. I mean, this is one he has to challenge. Uh, Joe Juravicious never caught that ball. The ruling on the field is being challenged as a completed pass. Yeah, yeah, that has to be. And, and he's going to win this challenge. Yeah, I think he probably will. I thought man, he might be a little gun shy. Yeah, but, but you still have to do it if it's right. I mean, you see the ball, and he comes down, and the ball is out before it ever, he, he never had control of that. Dexter McLean came up with the interception. Dre Bly picked up the fumble. Remember last year they said that, you know, that that was an incomplete pass because part of the ball hits the ground. Now they say that if you have control of it, yeah. then it's okay if part of the ball hits the ground. Joe Juravicious never had control of that ball. I mean, that can't be a fumble because he never had control of it. He, I mean, he came down and... And the, and the ball was knocked out by the ground. You can't fumble it if you don't have it. That's right. So they're going to they're going to take that one. The ruling on the field was an interception, so they must have thought he did have it. But that doesn't appear that he did have it. See there, the ball touched the ground. So right now, it's an incomplete pass. They called that an interception, so they must think his hand was underneath the ball. Not a fumble recovery, an interception. Yeah, but the ball still hit the ground. Right. I mean, if, right. if, 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 if Juravicious had control of the ball in his hands and it bounced out, again, we go back to the Monday night play. If the ball never hits the ground, then it can be an interception. And then it can be but an if interception. The ball, if the ball hits the ground, then it can't be an interception. So the question has to be, did it hit the ground? Yeah, the ball did hit the ground. I mean, you can see it. He picked it up on a one hop. This is all the giant challenges in this half. Yeah, that's that's the thing. It's all their challenges. Yeah. See, the ball hit the yeah, ground. The now ball did hit the it's ground. an incomplete pass. So it wasn't. If the ball, if it After come reviewing off him, the play, it is an incomplete pass. The ball hit the ground. There is no charge timeout for the New York Giants. So the challenge is upheld. And, and then the big thing here, now the Giants get the punt instead of the Rams having the ball there. They're going to get, the Rams are going to get the ball yep. through this punt, but they're going to not have the field position they would have had. Brad Maynard back to punt, the new father. That was nice. He came by and yep. uh, gave us cigars yesterday. Connor is the offspring's name. As I hear Hakeem back deep. This is a dangerous return, man. Yes, it is. 
Johnson with good kick. However, flag on the play back at the line of scrimmage. Hakeem is hit hard. And he goes and the ball comes loose, but he was down. He was down. And the referee that time came running in in motion. Not the official, not the referee. Well, the referee was the guy back there. I think he called roughing the kicker against the Rams. I don't know if it's still not going to be a first down now. Because this roughing the kicker is not an automatic first down. The Giants are like fourth and eight. Right. If this is a five yard roughing, you have two types, five and 15. Right. If it's a five yard, it will not be a first down. Running into the kicker, number 32 of the receiving team. That's Great a five guy. yard penalty, still fourth down. So they'll punt again. Yeah, you'll see number 32 is Dre Bly. Yeah, and he, he really didn't do that much. I mean, that's no. the five yard variety. Once the ball leaves, you can't touch the kicker. That's all Dre Bly did was touch him. So now they get the five yard penalty, but again, it's not an automatic first down. So Hakeem will have again. another chance. Brad Maynard will punt again. After that last hit Hakeem took, I don't know that he wants another that's chance right, right now. to the nine. Well, he got his other chance. And the Giants lost yardage on that one as Greg Camilla knocked him out of bounds. For another game break, let's return to James Brown in Los Angeles. Hey, Pat, we showed you the game-time field goal by David Akers for Philadelphia. Take a look at this in overtime. A duplicate 42-yard field goal that proves to be the game winner. Second consecutive overtime win for Philadelphia. Eagles improved to seven and four. Back to Pat Summerall and John Madden. Now the Eagles don't. We saw them last week. Yeah. Uh, they don't look like a seven and four team. They're doing it with mirrors and, and some ahead. great coaching. You. Andy, Andy Reid as a head coach knows what he's doing. Rams ball first and ten at their own 43. Getting a little overload right here to, to get an overload here in this pass rush. No backs. Roll empty. This is where they have to put pressure on it. Attended for Isaac Bruce. Ryan Phillips right with him. And I think that's the thing that Mike March was worrying about is, is you know, without the run, without Marshall Falk in there running, can he go empty and can the pass protection hold up? And that's a big thing because he has the receivers. He thinks he can get mismatches with the Giants defensive backs, which he can. But if he doesn't have a running game going or doesn't get some running going, these guys right up here are going to raise too much havoc and take their timing away. Green back to throw. Complete to Ricky Pro. And they did it on that time. Those of you who watched Philadelphia beat Pittsburgh 26-23 in overtime, welcome to Giants Stadium where the Rams lead the Giants 7-0. Trent Green, two out of six, 15 yards, one touchdown. You know, if you look at this, this matchup here, the, the Rams really have the advantage in receivers against defensive backs. So the way that the way that the Giants can get that back is with pass rush. Corey Holt to the 25. The thing they just come out there and he'll throw a screen to anyone. That, that was just a screen pass to turn Tory Holt. Dave Thomas was on him. You know, didn't make a play, and they can take a little play. I mean, they're better than, at rack than anyone in football. Rack is run after the catch, and they just take a little none yard pass, and boom, they make a first down. Like the 49ers used to be. Right, and, and the Giants, the way you defend that, Tampa Bay did the best job. People are still looking at that Tampa Bay championship game, but you keep things in front of you, and you have to tackle. First and 10 at the Giant 26. Here's Green again, going to throw back if he has a chance, and he doesn't. Strahan was there. Great play by Michael Strahan. You know, that bootleg isn't working anymore because it used to be 
that ends wouldn't get up the field. Now, if you watch straight in here, when they go this way and they start the action this way, ends used to come in like this. Now, when you start action that way, ends are coming straight up the field. Now, watch Strahan here. They were going to throw back. Bootleg. Right, they were going to. She was a bootleg to come out here, but that end is not going for it anymore. And Strahan didn't go for it. He stayed exactly where he was supposed to be. Second down. 19 yards they need. Screen pass. And a good play. Justin Watson caught the ball. Jesse Armstead. The guy to me, it. The guy to me that made it on defense was Keith Hamilton, who, who is one of the most improved players, not only on this team, but in the whole league, because he put pressure on Trent Green. And you're going to see him coming straight up the middle right there, and he's going to make Green throw it before he wants to. And then, then that threw the whole timing off, and Jesse Armstead was able to get in there and make the play. But Keith Hamilton has really been a force inside. For he's lost team. weight, says he feels better, and he's playing extremely well, as you point out. Third and 19. And the Giants are playing with a three-man line. Trent Green throws incomplete. Intended for Hakeem. There's Jason Nothing Seahorn. Good. Jason Seahorn was there, and Jason Seahorn has missed a couple weeks with a broken rib. The broken rib he had is right up underneath his collarbone, so he can't put a pad on it, and he can't take any pain medicine or anything for it. So he said the big thing that's going to be is is the first hit, you know, because he doesn't know how it's going to feel. Because I don't know that that rib. I didn't even know you had a rib up there, you know, under well, your collarbone. Well, you can't pad it, he said. Yeah, no, I mean you can't do anything for it, and it just has to calcify over, and it's just starting to calcify. Tiki Barber back with Baker's punt. Down the field, good punt, good coverage. Tony Horn down there. And then once again, the Giants will start inside their own five. Aerial, aerial coverage for today's game is brought to you by the SBC Telecom Blimp. Giant Stadium. From above on what turned out to be a sparkling day. It looked a little threatening earlier and yesterday, but today's good. First and ten at their four for the Giants. Cross goes back. Ike Hilliard. You know, an interesting thing happened. I don't know how interesting it is, but, you know, Glenn Parker, the old left guard for the, for the Giants, who's been doing an outstanding job, pulled his calf muscle in the, in the pregame warm-up. So that's why Mike Rosenfall is playing left guard. But, I felt that, you know, Lomas Brown, they brought in Lomas Brown, a 16-year veteran, and Glenn Parker, the 11-year veteran, playing that left side. I thought they really solidified the running game of the Giants. Second and five, Collins rolling and throwing and complete to Ike Hilliard again. And a flag on the play. Remember that bootleg that the, where Michael Strahan got up to the Rams made that time the end didn't get up the field because usually it's his job and when Kerry Collins is able to bootleg fake one way and go out the other way and get outside the ends fall the illegal contact occurred when the quarterback was out of the pocket therefore there is no fall you know London Fletcher talked to us about yeah, that last yeah. night remember he he just clocked the guy last week and you know after it was 10 yards downfield and he said you can do that once the quarterback gets outside that tight end area here you see so now once the quarterbacks out here he's like a runner so so you can defend yourself and the other guys are like blocks I didn't see anybody close to him first maybe, and ten maybe that's why they picked it up because they didn't see it either they made one up that's Ron Dane the ball carrier you know you wonder uh, I mean, I, I bet the Ron Dane is going to end up with, with 20 carries at the end of this game if the Giants have their way. But they don't want to start out that way. I mean, first of all, they've had bad field position. Started out once in the two-yard line, once on the four-yard line. But where a running back really gets his yards are in the third and fourth quarter. Somehow the defense seems to be less 
enthusiastic. Here's a pretty good matchup right here. Grant Wistrom and Lomas Brown. This is Tiki Barber. And he does well to get about a yard. Grant Wistrom, number 98, for a big guy, has the, has the best motor I think that I've ever seen. You know, that that, that he, he he plays like like linebackers and defensive backs. I mean, this guy could just go all day. And I mean, he'll 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 handle stuff at, at his side. He's a very good pass rusher, and he'll make tackles on the other side of the field at the line of scrimmage for no gain. He scooped up a fumble last week and ran for a touchdown, or what was an apparent touchdown. It was called back, but he looked like a halfback. Oh yeah, and took a quarter out of him. The pass is for Ike Hilliard. Incomplete. He had it apparently, and when he rolled out of bounds, he lost it. What they said is he bobbled it. Bobbled it. Again, you have to have control of it before you go out of bounds. Here's Ike Killiard right here. It looks like he slips just as he makes his cut. I didn't. I didn't see the bobble, but they say that he that he bobbled it. You can see him lose it. Yeah, as I saw him lost it after he lose it after he goes out. I think the ball hit the ground. Yeah, it think, did. Yeah, it's an incomplete pass. Brad Maynard, another good kick. Team at about the 33. And he can find some room, can't he? Got to beat the punter, and he couldn't do that. But another good return by Oz Hakeem. The Rams lead it seven to nothing, threatening now to get more with 322 left in the first quarter. That looks like lunch and dinner and refreshments. That was a wild scene out yeah. there, wasn't it? We, we got here about three hours before game time and and they and they beat us here. They were already cooking. Well, as you said, I don't see a lot of food out there. You see a lot in there. Yeah, you did. It's pretty good. Here's Crumb Candidate. His first carry. Yo, the Isaac, Rams' number one draft choice. Excuse me. Isaac Bruce hasn't caught a ball yet. We talked to about the matchup defense that the Giants are using. Jason Seahorn is going wherever Isaac Bruce goes. And you worried about Jason Seahorn? You know, if he was going to be able to play and do all those things, he said. He's in pretty good shape. I mean, he's been running and doing all those things, but but he, he, he said it's just not the hit is a big thing. He won't know until he has to make a tackle and gets it. Here's Trent Green, and he's going to take off Ooh, and slide inside the ten or just about at the ten. You know that's that's the thing. The only time that Jason Seahorn doesn't take Isaac Bruce is when he goes in the slot. But watch this. No matter what quarterback, when you go on a stunt and you're going to leave a lane like this. He's going to take it and you miss a tackle. Now all those other guys are playing man to man. And those receivers are so good. They all have their backs to the quarterback. Watch Trump candidate here. He's a running back. Now if you're going to play running back you have to be able to block because they're going to blitz you. Green. Tosses incomplete. Intended for candidate. Everyone was surprised when the Rams drafted Trunk Candidate. There's a, a flag, a flag the down there. Yeah. That in the first round, because they had Marshall Fall, and that's why they drafted the Candidate. <laughs> because they said if anything happens to Marshall Fall, he's such a big part. Illegal of contact, offense. 20 defense, the five-yard penalty, first down. He's such a big guy that he knows. Now watch what Sam Garns does here. He's on Isaac Bruce and he knows that's going to be a mismatch so you can either cover him or you can grab him and tackle him and roll with him. Yeah. Garns chose the latter. And so that makes up an automatic automatic first down but at the five. Those are the things that the Rams do to you. They yeah. have so many good receivers that they can get a mismatch. Isaac Bruce on Sam Garns is a mismatch. Green back to throw has time and throws touchdown. Torrey Hope. You know, and the key word was he had time. That that was a big thing. You know, without a running game, that was a question I had. Without a running game, 
Can this offensive line protect and give Trent Green time? And they do. I mean, you see, here's Torrey Holt here. He starts there and just comes to the inside. Now he feels a hole, and he works back a little, mm -hmm. just a little, to give Trent Green something to throw to. But again, the key word was time, and the key thing is pass protection. Jeff Hall kicks this extra point. Wilkins had kicked the first one. I don't know if he re-injured his leg or not, but Hall kicked that one. 14-0. Back at Giants Stadium, where the scoring drive, the last one for the Rams, was scored by Holt. A minute 55 left in the first, 14 0. The Rams lead it. Levingston on the return. And here come the flags again. On the kickoff return. You know, one of the interesting guys going down there is this guy right here, number 77, Sean Moran. He's a big defensive lineman. In fact, he's been the starter. He's yeah. the guy that uh, beat out Kevin Carter for a couple games, started in lieu of Kevin Carter. But you don't see Holding many. 51 on the return team during the run back. 10-yard penalty for foul. But you don't see many of these big old guys run down there. And isn't it funny how sometimes they can be the fastest guy? He gets down there. Look at this. <laughs> and he's tackled. Across the Hudson, the glass canyons of Manhattan. First and ten at the 15 for the Giants, trailing 14 nothing. Reverse coming. Mike Hilliard. And Hilliard stays on his feet, tried to cut back, got outside the 20. Taken down by Dre Bly. Yeah, and you see the first guy there, we were talking about him earlier, Grant Wistrom. Those are the types of things that he do. I mean, I mean, he does. He kind of missed the tackle there. But but if you run to the other side, he'll be there. If you reverse to his side, he's going to be there. This guy right here is a very special player. Unit. This is Ron Dane. Nothing doing. Taken down by Wistrom from the other side. There's Jeff Wilkins, who's been out with a an aggravated thigh muscle. You remember this? Yeah, this was against Atlanta. Yeah. And he kicked off, and you can see that he grabs that right thigh. And that's what he's done. Re-aggravated it today on the first extra point. Mike March last night thought that he would be okay yep. for extra point and field goal, but not for kickoff. Fake to Dane. Collins chased. Yep, that was that complete. That was that bootleg again. We we're talking about to see Kevin yep. Carter how he played it and the difference. If that end, when they go away, if he'll get up the field, it's almost impossible to bootleg now. That time they went away, Kevin Carter went right up the field, and he was right in Kerry Collins' face. The Giants have to punt again. 19 seconds left in the first quarter. Maynard back to punt. And again, Hakeem back for the Rams. Another good kick. Hakeem lets it bounce. And the Giants will down it at about the 23. And this is where if the Giants could play some defense here, they can get some better field position. They've been backed up in their end zone and close all game long, all quarter long. That's the end of one. 14 nothing. Six seconds left in the first quarter. Rams 14, the Giants nothing. Rams ball. At their own 23, first and 10. Turn Kennedy. A couple of yards, and that's any, the end of the first quarter. With the score of the Rams, 14, the Giants nothing. Fox NFL Sunday from New York will continue after these messages.
Back at Giants Stadium, Pat Summerall, John Madden. The Rams 14, the Giants nothing. Rams have the ball, second down. About eight they need. Candidate goes in motion. Trent Green throws it out to him. Now he's got some speed. Well played, Mike Barrow. The Rams first time holding an opponent to scoreless as they have done the Giants in the first quarter since game 15 last year against the Chicago Bears. You know, and you, and you have to give some credit to Bud Carson. I mean, yep, maybe you have to give a lot of credit to, to Bud Carson because that defense wasn't playing very well, but in addition to not playing very well, they weren't playing with much enthusiasm. And now they're playing better, and they're playing with a heck of a lot more enthusiasm. Third and four. Here's Green back to throw it. He lays it up high in the direction of Candidate. Incomplete. And the Rams will have to punt. That was a matchup that they were trying to get. You know, they said that anytime you could get Trunk Candidate out on a linebacker, but when that linebacker is Jesse Armstead, who can not only run, but is very, very savvy, it's not going to work. You see him out here. That's a trend. They're trying to get a man on man, and you see they just run stride for stride with him. They got what they wanted. But I don't know that Jesse Armstead is, is what, what they want. wanted. Right. Talking about a linebacker. Good kick to Tiki Barber, who takes it at about the 17. He is taken down by Chris Thomas. And the Giants will take over. This is the best shape they've been in in regards to field position in a long time. That time of year. I tell you, that's beautiful. I think I think one of the amazing things in the world is Central Park. That no one's it ever really is. This is Ron Dane who breaks through the middle. Dane to the 40, the 30. Knocked out of bounds. Yep, it was just a matter of time that they had to start get that running game going. We talked about the field position. The defense got in the field position. Dane's going to get him this play here. He just runs through a lot of stuff, and what he did is he's patient. He's patient in the backfield. He lets his line work. Then he finds a little crease, and boom, he just bursts right through it. Love, watch London Fletcher. He just overplays the play. That's Pettigrew right there. You see Cross right there. Fletcher goes right by it, and Dane goes right by all of them. Tiki Barber is deep now. I brought this crowd up. This is Barber. He gets to about the 13. Now anytime there's a there's a long game, a wide receiver is going to make a block. Now watch Armani Toomer. He just gets enough right there to let Ron Dane get to the outside. That wasn't much of a block, but all they have to do is get downfield. Get downfield. Get out in front. Let him set something up and run off it. Ron Dane is listed at 255. And he can move. Second and seven. Barber. And he gets the pass. And Tiki Barber is going to score. And the Giants are on the board. All they needed was a field position. The defense got in the field position. And this whole crowd and this whole offense has just come alive. Ron Stone there. They had to let that offensive line tee off, make some blocks, let big Ron Dane get a run. Then you hit him in the middle with the power, and then you go outside the Tiki Barber for the touchdown. Now, that's the giant football we were talking about. Daluiso for the extra point to make it 14-7 and cut into the Rams' lead. It's good. And it's 14-7. Here's Tiki Barber. Looking for that end zone. Back at Giants Stadium, the Giants leading 14, uh, the Rams leading the Giants 14 7. The Giants just got their touchdown. Tony Hall is deep from about the five. Horn knocked out of bounds at 
the 30. Sprung that holy moly. That was a real punch thrown. Yes, it is. The guy with a hat off. I watched that heavyweight championship yep. fight last night, and there was more blows thrown in that little skirmish down there than I saw all night. Jesse Armstead. I don't think we want to know what he said. Well, any any time a guy loses his hat and all he has on his head is an earring, he's in for trouble. <laughs> Now watch it's it's always on the sideline after you see that one more yeah. hit. Yeah. See Thomas on Monty, and if someone's gonna say something, that guy's gonna protect himself. Jesse's in there again, no hat, no just an earring. And he's he, he's gonna be pretty tough to do that. That's not a wise choice. No hat. But but there were no penalties. First to ten Rams at their own 29. Trent Green drops the throw it. Pass is caught by Isaac Bruce. And right now, for a game break, let's return you to James Brown in Los Angeles. Pat and John, the New Orleans Saints' sixth consecutive victory was tempered today by the loss of Ricky Williams here breaking his left ankle. Ricky Williams was delivering on a talent and the explosiveness so many people were expecting. 93 yards on the day, exactly 1,000 yards for the season, but Ricky is out for a minimum of six to eight weeks. Let's take it back to Pat and John. Giants Stadium, first and ten for the Rams. Bruce goes in motion. Here's Trent Green going deep. Over his head is Torrey Hope. Looked like he stopped running or broke stride or didn't continue. You know, and that was a pattern he was telling us about last night. It's called a deep seven. And when you're inside the 50, you run to that second cone. What he's going to do is he's going to come up and then come in a little then he's going to go right to the corner deep you see it and i think you're right he did slow up a little but you know we talked about shots and how both teams have in their card their play calling card shots that was a shot to Tory holmes yep. ball was seven deep second and ten green drops the throw again gets it outside to Justin Watson. Stopped by Dave Thomas. You know, if you go back to that fight again, you see Jesse Armstead is here. He wasn't even in on that play. I'm surprised that he didn't get penalized. He wasn't on the field. He comes off the sideline to get in that thing. The first thing that happens, he gets his hat knocked yeah. off. He didn't have it buckled. Now, I'm, I'm surprised. I mean, they, they have to stop that quickly and and to really stop it quickly, they have to throw a flag in those situations. Third and eight. Trent Green. Bruce. First down. I think that's Isaac Bruce's first catch of the day. And you're going to see he's out there on Jason Seahorn. Excuse me, it's his second. Here's Jason Seahorn here playing Isaac Bruce. And it's going to be an out pattern. See, he gets a little on his outside shoulder. And then he stopped, and as he makes the out, he also comes back a little. But I'll tell you, the other key to this is, is look at the time that Trent Green had. Mm -hmm. And he's been having that this whole game, where he can get back there and look and step up and throw. The giant defense is allowing Trent Green too much time. They rush with four, and now they drop one of them out. And Green goes outside to Bruce again. Isaac Bruce. Fasten your seatbelts and get ready for the ride of your life as the search for Agent Mulder takes you where you've never been before. It's on an all-new episode of The X-Files tonight at 9, 8 Central. Remember, the truth is out there. Hey, the truth is this is this pass protection of this, this Ram offensive line, which in this first half has really been impressive because... They don't have a runner or a threat of a running game, and yet they're doing this. Bruce gets a rest. Justin Watson. Watson inside the 25, about the 23. Stopped by Pete Monty. It was, it was funny that Marshall Falk is, is from San Diego State. There's Kurt Warner. There's Marshall Falk right behind him. And then, and then he went to San Diego State and did all great things and was 
number one draft choice. And then and then Watson, Justin Watson, was also he was a backup at San Diego State to Marshall Falk. And he ends up now with the Rams starting for Marshall Falk with this injury. Second and five. Green drops to throw it. Drops it out to Justin Watson. Watson, you can hear the hit all the way up here. Sam Garns unloaded on that one. Yes, did he? The key injuries. Kurt Warner, Marshall Falk, Robert Holcomb, the regular fullback for the Rams, Todd Light, and Glenn Parker got hurt in the pregame warm-up today for the Giants. Yeah, and this is the hit I was just talking about right there. And Sam Garns comes in right there. Ooh, and he really unloaded. You can hear that one all the way up here. Third and short. Watson. Got close. I'm not sure he got it. Yeah, I don't think he got to the yellow line. I think the Giants stopped him. Over the years, you know, we've done so many Giant games, seen so many Giant games, and they, they, they really excel in this area. That, you know, short yardage goal line. You think of the Lawrence Taylors and the Harry Carsons and Jim Burtz and all those guys in there that would play it so well. And now John Fox is the defensive coordinator who. All the players really respect John Fox. I mean, they talk about all the things that you know they do Seven. and he does, and he is really 51. the leader of these defensive players. And the Rams can't get their right guys in there. Jeff Hall came out to try the kick. Well, Trent Green didn't come off. I think he stayed out there. I think I think I think Trent Green thought they were going to go Trick for play. fourth down. Trick play. 14-7. Wilkins has aggravated his thigh muscle, so Jeff Hall is on the try from 38 yards out. Keith Lyle is the holder. And he's going to take off with it. Lyle gets a ram first down. That had to be a call play. Oh, yeah, it was because they had a timeout, remember? The yep. Uh, uh, Trent Green was on the field. He thought they were going to go for it on fourth down. As he came off, he took a timeout. And you see, it's just snapped a Lyle. Now they knew something. And, and, and you always pick. You, you go to the block or away from the block. The block was coming from the other side. You see, you set up a field goal block. Here's where the block is coming from. So if you're going to run, you run to that other side. You see, they pulled a lineman out there, and they knew yeah. that they had it away from the block. First and ten at the Giants, 16. Trent Green up the middle, down to about the 12 to Ricky Prohl. Hey, that's one thing, you know, we talk about Mike Martz and the way that he, he calls plays. He is, he is very, very aggressive in his play calling and even in those types of things. You know, he's, he's never going to let you get comfortable. He's never going to let you be in a position where yeah. you can say, I know what they're going to do. With this Ram offense, you never know what they're going to do. Green gets to his tailback. Justin Watson, who gets down to about the seven. March gives you the impression that whatever pops into his head, that's what he's going to call. Yeah, and he wasn't even sure last night when we when we talked to him, he, he hadn't made up his list yet. And, uh, you know, his script and uh, yeah. prioritize all the areas. In fact, he was saying last night that from this 20-yard line, this area oops, that we used to have right here, from that 20-yard line in, he has a mini game plan just for that area. So he has runs, he has passes, he has short yardage. He has every situation. And he said this area right here has no, its own special game Lewis. plan. Well... You said something to him last night. Have you ever thought of doing thus and so? And he said, well, no, I never thought of that. Maybe I'll do that. Right. 5.51 left in the first half. The horn. That's horn. 14-7. The Rams have five receivers in there. And no backs. Right. Three receivers on the right, two on the left. 
and empty, and the Giants are sent scurrying. Touchdown. Ricky Troll underneath. And the big thing there is, you know, Trent Gray, nice throw, but it's a pass protection. When you can put in five wide receivers and still protect and still give this guy this much time, he's going to eat you up. I mean, when you have no protectors in there, you have to blitz him or you have to get a pass rush on him. You can't let Trent Green do this. You That's a big get... one from Ricky Prohl. You know, his, yeah. his parents, you know, were big Giant fans. In fact, still have season tickets here. Jeff Hall for the extra point, and it's right down the middle. But a flag on the play? No flag. Sorry. No flag. Trent Green comfortable in the pocket. A lot of time. Touchdown, Ricky Pro. Five minutes, 43 seconds left before halftime here at Giants Stadium, and the Rams lead the Giants 21 to 7. They kept the drive alive with a fake field goal. You look at that Ricky Pro, that eight yard catch. He made, a, he made a great move down there. That's one of the things these Ram receivers do. They have good speed and good quickness, and they make good, quick cuts. Omar Stoudmire with the return, and he's wrestled to the ground at about the 29, 28 or 29. But as we talk about moves, watch Ricky Prohl here. The way he comes in, and he makes boom. I mean, he makes a real quick move. They, they keep things square, and they make them sharp. You see here? Now watch right there. See right there? Yep. And he just gets that separation, and Trent Green throws it to him perfectly. But they all do that. I mean, they all create separation by good, quick, and square moves. Sort of shook his shoulders to the outside and then came back inside. And Ricky Prohl is a master at that. First and 10 at their own 29 for the Giants. And Collins back to throw. Pass complete to his tight end, Pete Mitchell. Now the Giants, I mean, being down by two touchdowns is not, in the second quarter, is not a panic mode type of no. situation. They just have to keep, you know, mixing it up. You know, keep their running. Remember they got Ron Dane back there. Remember they got Tiki Barber. Let their offensive line work and, and keep playing that type of football and hope that their defense somewhere starts to get a little more pressure on Trent Green. Dane. Collins throws. Picked off. Dexter McLean just picked it off. Yeah, that's the thing that they don't have to do. Start forcing balls into, into double coverage and start to worry about being behind by two. And you're going to see it here as we just let it go. You're going to see back here when he comes out here and he, you see he gets a corner right here but he really does have double coverage. They got him here and they got him here. And, and that's a tough one to throw into. In fact, in fact, when you get that double cover, you better throw away from it. He's throwing right there. You see what's going to happen. If it's going to be short, Bly's going to get it. And Bly is still down. He got it. He certainly got it. In fact, in fact, that was that was a poor throw that either Bly or Dexter McLean could come up with that. But that was the last thing that the Giants had to do was, was 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 force anything again. It's not a panic situation. You're down by two. That's a bad news. But the good news is it's only the second quarter and you can't have turnovers. Two today. That's one of the things that Fossil Jim Fossil was talking about yesterday. We can't have turnovers as you just said. Yeah, they have to win that battle of the turnovers and they're they're not winning the battle of the turnovers so far today. They're not. Reverse coming and room for Tory Hope. Hope gets about six. They'll they'll run a reverse to any of these yeah. guys. I mean they'll run it to Isaac Bruce, they'll run it to Hope, they'll run it to Oz Hakeem because because they're all, you know, we talked earlier about Rack run after the catch and and the run after the catch receivers are the best. I mean the Rams are the best at run after the catch. Ricky Prohl is in there again. Usually when Ricky Prohl is in there, that usually means 
either four wide receivers or they're going to throw to Ricky Pro. Justin Watson breaks a couple of tacklers and gets the first down. That's Dre Bly knocked unconscious after that in pass interception. Flag on the play. Was it Mike March last night that were telling us that these teams really don't like each yes, other? Yes. I wasn't exactly sure. I mean, they hadn't really played that much, but they're playing that type of game. Well, there's some remarks that uh, the giant fullback, Greg Camilla, necessary roughness, 92 defense had made last year before and during and after touchdown. the game about them being not a physical team, a finesse team. Right, and of course they... You know, they can be physical and they can be finesse, but, but they have so much speed and, and so many weapons. That last penalty was on Michael Strahan and usually the frustration. You know, and that's always been a giant defensive thing. You know, they worry about how many plays are on the field and, and they just get off the field and then there's a turnover and they have to come back. And, and then you get a penalty like that, Michael Strahan, that's usually a frustration penalty. Bruce is the man in motion. They fired deep and complete. It was Torrey Hope with that same pattern. Yep, that's that that's that deep seven. What what he does is he just comes up the field, then he goes to the second pylon. You see, he's trying to throw it right back here. That's the angle that he's going. He goes up the field, and then we used to call that a corner pattern, but he's just running over that outside shoulder, and they want to throw the ball deep to the second pylon. That could almost hit that second pylon. Yeah, it did. There's a big pylon. Looks like a pumpkin. Yeah. A shot of the moon. A big old pumpkin moon. Up the middle complete. That's Torrey Holt again. And again, you can just see in this game that Trent Green is getting more and more comfortable. And again, why is that? Because he has protection. They haven't knocked him down. And any time... You get a quarterback, you have to get on him. Look, he's been sacked once, hit four times, hurried only two times, and that was early because that hasn't happened in the second quarter. Strahan got the only sack, and that was early. Pump fake. Trent Green looked right. Now he's going to take off himself, and he might score, and he does. Touchdown, Trent Green, for the Rams. Yep, you see what happened? He was, oh, looks like he got a little something there in that left side. He was trying to go deep to Isaac Bruce. He's also trying to smile now. Yeah, but Dave Thomas was on Isaac Bruce. You see, he gives a pump, and you give the move, and then you go deep, and he wasn't, he was covered there by Dave Parker, so then he goes to the other side. And then he, he sees nothing there except the lane that he can run in for a touchdown. Jeff Hall for the extra point. Which is good. But it all started with not a lot of pass rush. Good coverage by Dave Thomas. And he had to come back, made a run out of it. And look at that pump. The Rams 28, the Giants 7, 241 left in the first half. You look here and you watch Trent Green, you see him pump. And then he's going there. He's looking for Isaac Bruce out there against Dave Thomas. Thomas had good coverage. Now he comes back to the left, and he sees the block that Orlando Pace gets on Cedric Jones. And that block opened up such a big lane, he just had to take it for the touchdown. Remember, he got hurt last year, missed the whole season with a bad knee. And he was really laboring to get to the end zone. Almost dragging that one knee. Reggie Stevens on the kickoff return. And he's got some room. And the kicker brings him down, Jeff Hall. Tonight it's a night of... A couple of players down on that last kickoff return. Yeah, there was also a penalty. Yep. The kicking team was off sides. You're going to see Stevens right here. You see his... his his yep. leg see, it gets caught underneath right there. Pretty good tackle for a kicker, don't you think? That, that was an excellent. Any any tackle is a good tackle by a kicker. Hmm. 
the kicking team, the, the Rams were offside. The Giants got a good return, so they're going to not take that penalty. Dave Thomas was over checking on his teammate. Reggie Stevens, and he just got up and is running off the field, so, so that's a good thing. I.J. Allen was shaking up. There he is. And that was a result. Now, again, they can't press or you know, start to force things because that last ramp touchdown was a result of a turnover. Hand off to Barber. Picked up by London Fletcher. Yeah, that was one of the things that we talked about at the beginning of the game that when you play the Rams, you have to play your football, but you have to score points. And the Giants only average 19 points a game, and that's not going to be enough. And you knew that going in. And they had a few opportunities they just haven't taken advantage of. Giants get the ball to Greg Camilla, the fullback. And we'll have the two-minute warning. 28-7. Rams right now in command. We would like to thank the SBC Telecom Blimp and its crew for providing aerial coverage for today's game, tonight's game. But now, what a view they've got from up there. And they've got a view of the offensive line. You know, it's funny. They sit in the order that they play. You watch Tucker's a right tackle, and then Timmerman is the right guard. They, they sit in the same order that they line up in. Here's Ron Dane. Straight ahead, and... Maybe got a yard. Maybe got the first down. And then Jim Hannafin's there. But if you start on the left, Orlando Pace was there. Then Nutton, then McCollum the center. Timmerman the right guard. And, and Tucker the right tackle. They just, that's the way they line up when they break the huddle. That's the way they sit on the bench when they listen to their coach, Jim Hannafin. Now there's a guy who will tell you a story, Jim Hannafin. Oh yeah, he he got me out there in the field. I was talking to old Jim in the end zone tonight, and and darn near couldn't get away. He had one of his old players. Remember Jim Hannafin was the head coach of the St. Louis Cardinals when they were yeah. Cardinals, and his great running back at the time, who later played for the Giants, was O.J. Anderson. So O.J. Anderson was down there with Jim Hannafin, and we were telling stories about Jim Hannafin as the head coach. That uh, you could have stayed there a long time telling stories about this guy. The other thing is, if you look back, Jim Hannafin went to the University of California, and he was a he was receiver. a leading yeah. He, but he would not only was he a receiver, he was a leading pass receiver in the country. Who would have thought? I huh? look at him now. Coming up on the Visa halftime report, Terry Howie and Chris will have scores and highlights from around the league and our Fox Sports ticker will have up to the second stats. That's all coming up on the Visa Halftime Report. And you can see that this this giant team is frustrated. You can see the defensive line there that, that they're frustrated that you know that they had to go right back mm -hmm. in. But you have to go right back in and stop them. And and, and they haven't gotten any pressure on Trent Green. I mean, Trent Green has played great in his first half. And a lot of it, he has super wide receivers, and he has an offensive line that has really controlled that line of scrimmage. Fourth and short for the Giants. Dane's the deep back. And he gets the carry. He's close to the first down, but I'm not sure he got it. Yeah, they're going to mark it. You can see he got over the yellow line there. I think right at the end. I don't know where they're going to mark it. They gave it to the Rams. He didn't get it. Nope, he didn't get it. That's the thing. And these fans are starting to boo right now. I mean, that's one thing. In fact, when we talked to London Fletcher last night, he said they are not going to out physical us. Well, they certainly didn't on that play. Uh, and, they, and they haven't with their defensive line either on the Rams' offensive line. Keith Lyle up from the safety spot to knock him back. That was a good tackle. Yes, Keith Lyle was the guy that made that play. Yeah. And London Fletcher. 
Trent Green. Fires. Isaac, no, I beg your pardon. Corey Holt. They say it hit the ground. Incomplete. I'll tell you, one thing you know, about Mike March, we talk about his aggressiveness. You know, he just keeps going. I mean, he's not going to he's not gonna stop. He's not going to run out any clock or anything. You can see that ball one hop in there. Good call. Torrey Holt. Torrey Holt is a, is a special player. In fact, one of the Rams players was saying last night that before this whole thing is over, Torrey Holt could be one of the best wide receivers that ever played the game. He enjoys the game. That's one thing about him. Trent Green, Ricky Pro has the Ram first down, and they're going to work for more. I remember last year talking about Ricky Pro to, to Dick Vermeil, and he was saying how Ricky Pro, we pay him a lot of money, and he's only the fourth wide receiver. But I'll tell you, when you go into a game, it's worth it to have a Ricky Pro. Out of the shotgun is Trent Green. Steps up into the pocket, side arms it out to Oz Hakeem, who steps out of bounds. Boy, he can move. I'll tell you, he's he's the nicest looking runner I've ever seen. I mean, he's like, I don't use those words like ballet or poetry or those types of things. But nice is Oz, pretty good, though. Well, no, yeah, Oz Hakeem is as close to, you just watch him run, and he is so, so fluid. And, you know, and, and, and he runs, and it just looks, I don't like this word either, but it looks pretty the way he runs. Well, yeah, now. Those words shouldn't be coming out of his mouth. I know that, but just look at the way he does it. I mean, and, and it's with a certain ease. I think, and he's gaining ground all the time. And I don't know. He's, I, I, I like he's fun to watch. When you quit it fluid, that was good enough. I know. I like that carried away. There. Here's Trent Green back to throw it. Eyes Hakeem touchdown. It came loose. He had it. Had a step. Had everything he needed. And he knows it. Yep, and he had the third corner. That was Emmanuel McDaniel who was back there with him. He's not so fluid now. Up nope, is not. You can see McDaniel's running with him. Oh, the ball's right there. Right he there. just dropped it. Right there. Yep. Yep. He had everything. I, I, I'll tell you, but the other thing that hasn't changed, Pat, is watch the protection. Watch, they're coming on blitzes. They're trying different things. But you let a guy have a clean step up like that, and he's going to cut you up, and he's been doing it. And that should have been six. Tony Horn this time. The Rams are out of timeouts. They're hurrying up their offense. And they can't do that spike thing because it's third down. They want to take a shot at it before they kick a field goal or try a field goal. Whoops. Flag on the play. That's a way to stop the clock. I think it's against the Rams for illegal motion. Well, they better get right up there in the line yeah. of scrimmage. All start. 62 offense. By rule, we will take 10 seconds off the scoreboard clock. Adam Timmerman. Yeah, see, you can't get an extra timeout by just by just uh, jumping offside. So they take 10 seconds off the clock, and then they're going to get the clock going now too. Jim That's Bosch why I said they should. Well, he should be winding. 11 seconds. Now it started. Here's Frank Green. Again, steps up in the pocket, fires, incomplete. Corey Holt, still two seconds left. Yeah, I think I think that's what they were trying to do there is just is just take that one more shot before they had to settle for the field goal attempt. And Jeff Hall will try. I know I used to say, you know, settle for the field goal or, or make the field just like it was automatic, and then you taught me years and years ago that. There's no such thing as an automatic field goal. Yeah, that's correct. Nor is there any such thing as a chip shot in a field goal. Both are true. Thank you. <laughs> 47 yards out. That's got plenty of leg and plenty of room, but it's no good. It's wide left. He just pulled it. That's the end of the first half with the score of the Rams 28, the Giants 7. Fox NFL Sunday will continue from New York after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. 
the Visa Halftime Report is brought to you by Visa. It's everywhere NFL fans want to be. All right, welcome back. I'm Terry Bradshaw, along with Howie Long and Chris Collinsworth. JB is on assignment, so we want to get you caught up with highlights and some scores that happened today. Rams 28, Giants 7 at the half. Trent Green, three touchdown passes and a touchdown run. Yeah, Joe Marciano, special teams coach, acting like a special teams coach after a failed onside kick by Martin Gramatica. Had what he wanted, bobbled the ball. Plate fake, Sean King back. It's Riedel Anthony, Keyshawn Johnson. Had dinner with him three weeks ago, 14 TD cents. Riedel Anthony, 19-yard fade hey. off, 14 to three. All right. 14 is who picked up that dinner tab by the way howie i think he should oh okay i figured yeah. that much all right here's some other scores around the league 49ers 21 to nothing a little bit of uh, nine minutes left in the third yeah, quarter of that football game in that one how about this game dolphins 14 charges nothing jay fiedler continues to play well new orleans saints now have won six in a row ricky williams over a thousand yards for the year of course the news is he has broken his left ankle out six to eight weeks. Vikings, Dante Culpepper, three pass, touchdown passes. One running, 31 to 14. Lions, Gary Mola gets his first win, 13 to 10 over Atlanta. Bills, Doug Flutie, Johnson, who you, you name it, 20 to three over the Bears. Miller out, broken, or Torrey has left a Achilles tendon. Steelers, 23. Oh, shocker. The Eagles, you bet, Eagles, John Harbaugh. Eagles were down 10 with less than three minutes to go in that yeah, game. Yeah, the special team coach for the Eagles, John Harbaugh, great job today. And this one, a shocker, 24 to 23. Ravens over the Titans. Trent Dilford, nice day today. Dale Greco missed that extra point. Seahawks get one for Mike Holmgren, 28 to 21 over the Jaguars. Hitting a three touchdown pass. All right, the Browns over the Patriots. Patriots turned it over four times in that one. Good stuff, Chris. Cowboys, Troy Aikman, a big half today, big game. 23 to 6 over hurt. the Bengals. Right, that Bengals with bad. a big late run in that one. Ricky Williams. You guys. <laughs> Ricky Williams, here's a guy that's come on. He had the injured ankle last year, comes on, breaks this ankle today. Now an all-rookie backfield. How I start with you, the impact that's going to have. Well, it has a tremendous impact, obviously, because Ricky Williams has kind of set the tone for that offense. But I think they're still going to be committed to that offense in terms of running the football behind that outstanding offensive line, setting up the play fix. Obviously, Chris, it's not going to be the same kind of running attack, but they have to stay committed. And you had to think that the Saints were now literally on the verge of maybe not just being one of the top teams, but possibly the top team. They started the season one and then three, had won six games in a row, but now the major cog in that offense, Ricky Williams, gone. You just don't know what's going to happen from there. I think I've found my spot. Some of you will be going to local news. The rest of you will be back Let's as we it. take a look at the first half between the Rams and the Giants. Yeah! Yeah! Ah, yeah! Go on with it, baby. You the man. Welcome to the Visa Halftime. I'm Terry Bradshaw along with Howie Long and Chris Collinsworth as we get to the highlights of the Giants-Rams. Looking to get the Rams back on track at the Meadowlands after losing two of the last three. Drops back, finds Roland Williams for a one-yard touchdown set up by an Amani Tuner fumble. Green back to pass again. Pumps. Hooks up to Torrey Holt on five-yard TV. Trent Green looks right, pumps for the double move, looks left, nothing there, pulls it down, 18-yard run. It's all on the pregame show. 28 to 7. He obviously listened to you, Terry. <laughs> yes, he did. Uh, my name, what Tumor's name Tumor. again? Tumor. That's what I thought yeah. it was. 28 to 7 Rams. Tilford. Ram <laughs> Rams and Giants. You know, I actually said I thought the Giants were going to win this game. But boy, you they did gotta, say that. I did say that. I'm going to go to you this Matter what, of fact. What's happening, Chris? You got tired of taking that abuse, didn't you? I, I, really, <laughs> I think the Giants' defense is making it too easy for Trent Green. Not only is he completing all the passes down the field, also has 44 yards rushing in the first half of this game. I'm surprised they haven't tried to bring more pressure. At some point, you can't let Trent Green sit back there and just pick you apart. You've got to come get him. Well, they, they obviously made a decision to try to play back and keep things in front of them. At some point, as Chris mentioned, though, when your front four is not getting there, and he really has not been under any great deal of pressure, he's just been sitting back there and picking them apart. As a matter of fact, they've missed a couple of shots that were wide open down the field. This Giants team is not really equipped to bounce back from this type of a, a first-half deficit, though, Terry. It'd be interesting to see how Kerry Collins responds and it come from behind. Amazing one. that Trent Green has now thrown 11 touchdown passes might we 
have a quarterback. <laughs> you know I had to be the first one to say that, right? His well, rating is actually higher than Kurt Warner's when Kurt Warner was in there. He's going to be wealthy, I know that. Uh, he's not wealthy. He's doing pretty good right now. All right. Thanks for joining us. It's been an exciting day around the National Football League. We would like to now send you back to the second half of the Rams and the Giants after these messages. We're back at Giants Stadium. Pat Summerall with John Madden. 28-7. The Rams lead the Giants. And as we look at first half statistics, Trent Green, the Ram quarterback, leads the team with 44 yards rushing. Uh, and we knew that they were going to have a, a problem running the ball, but who would have thought their leading rusher would be Trent Green? But again, that was the the defensive line of the Giants just giving him lanes and giving him too much time. And you know, Trent Green, when you add up what he's run and how he's run and what he's passed and how many first downs they have, uh, they've just given him way too much time. Well, Jim Fossil said that one of the things they wanted to do. To to the Rams was to limit their number of possessions but when they get 19 first downs you're not limiting much that strong candidate headed back for the locker room well, you know he was just coming off an injury an injured yep. foot and this was his first week back and I would I would guess that he's probably still having trouble with that foot Jeff Hall he had to retake his ankle and his foot one time already Levingston Got some room. Pass midfield. Boy, he got one real good block about the 30-yard line. Yeah, that's that's one of the toughest blocks you have to make is a kickoff return. But if you just watch Levingston as he gets the ball here, and there's going to be a good block right there is, is where the good block was. And that was one that freed him up around the 30 yard line to get about 20 more yards. 43 yard return. Good way to start the second half. Not being behind 28 to 7, but with a good return like that. Collins back to Barber. Maybe a yard. You know, the Giants didn't have the ball a lot, but if you look at the passing by zone, under 15 yards, Collins was one for one to the left, two for three in the middle, three for six to the right. And he's only thrown two passes in the first half over 15 yards. One of those was that interception that I thought he forced into double coverage. Second and nine. Collins in a passing situation here, drops the throw. Now he's coming out, now he's... Threw the ball forward in the grasp of Ray Agnew. And I think they're going to say that's okay if he's outside the tight end box. You see, you can't throw it away if you're inside. If you're inside to, to, to get rid of a sack. You see, you can't throw it away if you're inside. There was a receiver in the vicinity. You heard Bernie Kukar. I don't know. I didn't see the receiver in the vicinity. Did you? I didn't. I didn't know that there was any receiver in the in the vicinity that, that could catch that thing that came out of Corey, Gary Collins' hand. It was not the immediate vicinity. What I thought the rule was that he was outside the tight end box because there's no there's no receiver <laughs> there that there's Pete gonna Mitchell. catch that thing. Enough. But he's 40 yards away and he's going to catch it on about five hops. Collins back to throw. Gets Ike Hilliard. And Hilliard down the sideline is going to score. Not quite. Not quite. Yes, he did. He got in. They motioned it as if he stepped out first and then the both hands went up. I'll tell you, Kerry Collins really stood in there and threw that ball because Grant Whisper was right on him. And he found Ike Hilliard and then Ike Hilliard ran and he looked like Oz Hakeem. Watch the pressure that he's going to get right here. You're going to see right here. You see he's getting hit just as he throws the ball. But he stands in there, looks and looks, finds Ike Hilliard, and then Ike Hilliard makes a heck of a run he really to get does. that ball there in the end zone. That we saw for the extra point. And it's 28-14. Just a little over a minute gone in the third quarter. Grand Central Station in the background. 
28 14 the Rams lead the Giants scoring drive three plays 47 yards set up by that good return. This one bounces. And Tony Horn will down it in the end zone. Hey, you watch Ike Hilliard. He's going to come across here. But you know one of the things that they do is they come across. They work off this umpire. And watch a collision that they get there with the umpire. And he kind of picks them off. Now watch they come here. Now watch they're all going to kind of meet right in there. And they all get discombobulated. Guys get knocked down. Guys are spinning around. And out of that whole discombobulation came Ike Hilliard. And Kerry Collins really stood in there because Grant Whisperm was right on him as he threw that ball. First and ten at their own 20 for the Ram. Trent Green, the quarterback. Chase through a knuckler. And the pass is intercepted by Ryan Phillips. And the Giants are back in business again on offense. That's what they needed. They got pressure. That was Cedric Jones that time. He comes through and he's and he hits Trent Green just as he throws that. Sometimes you give a, an interception to the guy that gets it, but sometimes you got to give the guy that makes it. Watch Cedric Jones here. He's taking an inside. They're trying to block the tackle down and have the tight end block him. The tight end doesn't even catch him. And Cedric Jones hits him just as he throws the ball. Phillips is right there. It was some kind of screen. The only the only guys down there were offensive linemen. Right. First and ten, Giants at the Ram 11. Dane, nothing. He's a guy, he's a Maybe lost a foot or so. Well, Howard Cross was trying to block there, and he just got pushed right back into the pile. And you try and use your strength to get some movement. That time Kevin Carter was stout. You know that's what you want to be at the hole. You know they always talk about being stout against the run. I'll tell you Kevin Carter was stout against that run. Sometimes they call it play it tough. Play stout. Sometimes as a, as a coach when you don't know how to you don't know what to be you say just play like football player. Right. Barber to the one. Well, he hit that thing. Woo. That should be this. enough for a first down. They can make a first down without scoring. Yeah, the Giants came out here, and they look like the Rams did in the first half. Yeah. But Stinky Barber here, he's just going to get they get a good double team, a good lead right there, and he runs right off that lead. Camella makes a good block. On Fletcher. Yeah, he gets him, and he's going to get him right there. He gets London Fletcher, and Tiki Barber was right behind Greg Camella. Third and one. They didn't get the first. Ron Dane cut down behind the line of scrimmage. Lost the ball, but he was down. Well, they got London Fletcher the play before that. Now he's he's getting all excited, but the play before that, they got him on the lead. This play, they don't get London Fletcher. See, he's just gonna scrape off that outside, and he makes a heck of a tackle. Here comes the giant field goal team. And what happened? I think Ron Dane slipped. I think as he was going to make uh -huh. that cut, I think he slipped. But Fletcher played it well, scraping off there. And I think the way things are going, with all this time, that this is a right call. You know, if you didn't get the first down, then you better kick the field goal. Yeah, you saw is good to make it 28-17, 20 yard field goal, an extra point. But remember, no such thing as a chip shot. Hey, welcome back to Giants Stadium. Rams coach Mike Mark said in the first half his team really played well, but he was surprised and very disappointed in the amount of drop passes. He said his team did a pretty good job of taking advantage of the situations, but they need to do a better job in the second half. Uh, Giants coach Jim Fossil said now they're playing catch up ball. He said they did everything wrong in the first half that possibly could go wrong. He said now they can't afford to sit back grind the ball out and chew up the clock. They have to go put points on the board. Uh, uh, injury note in the second half. Trunk candidate, fractured left wrist. He's going to get a calf put on it. He's questionable for his return in the second half. Back up to you, Pat and John. Boy, Trunk candidates had a 
tough time, hadn't he, in his rookie year, number one draft choice? Yeah, remember the first time he got hurt was up there in Seattle. He volunteered for a kick coverage, and he got that foot injured on a kick coverage. Tony Horn, a yard deep in the end zone. And he's got some room. And Horn down at about the 27. Dave Thomas made a good tackle and a saving tackle, maybe. Now watch Ron Dane here as he's going to cut. Watch the divot that he takes out of there. I mean, when you're 255 pounds and you're going to change directions, it's a little easier on artificial turf on grass. It just equals a divot. And that and that, you know, I love to see grass on this field instead of artificial turf, but they've had a few problems. Yes, with they that. have. Here's Trent Green back to throw it. And the giant pressure gets him. That's what they needed. Right now for a game break, let's return to Terry Bradshaw in Los Angeles. Okay, Pat, thank you. Without five minutes remaining in the third quarter and, and down nine points, 14 to nine. Brett Favre sacked by Warren Sapp, injures his left ankle, icing it down on the sideline. His backup, Matt, Matt Hasselback, is in. We'll keep you updated on his injury, and we'll send it back to you, Pat Summerall, and my buddy, John Madden. Well, that's that's kind of nice. Yeah. Nice going, yeah. Terry. Thank you. Fred Green. That's Tory Holt. You know, that's that's not a good sight when you see the Green Bay Packers and you see Brett Favre without his shoe on. With ice on his ankle. I mean, these guys, you know, they have so much speed and they go deep so much. That when they just run a five yard pattern, you're worried about going deep in that double move and you just play off. And that's exactly what Dave Thomas did on that play. You know, he was worried about Tory Holt going deep, so he gives them too big a cushion, and then they get the first down with a short pass. Amazing what speed can do. Hold again in front of Thomas. I don't know that Dave Thomas is going to go for that for a long time. Dave Thomas is a is a pretty good tackle. He's a big guy. I mean, I was surprised at practice yesterday standing next to him how big Dave Thomas was. From Canada. What did you say? He has a broken wrist and That's they put a, they a said, cast on DJ it? said, yeah. Fractured wrist. Well, it looks like they have the cast on it, and then they're trying to put a pad over the cast. Green complete to Ricky Pro. It's a hard time, you know, playing your your really your first game as a rookie in this league, and you have both hands and both arms and both wrists. But when you have to try and play in this league for the first time, really, and you have something like that on your hand, and they're going to either hand it to you or throw it to you. I think the only thing left for Trunk Candidate to do in this game is to be a blocker. Special teams, maybe. But a bad foot to go with that bad hand. You don't get the full full package. Here's Trent Green back to throw again. Out of the pocket he comes. And he's going to take off again. And add to his rush leadership. He's saying they grabbed me by the face mask, but to no avail. You know, the thing about Trent Green is he's not known to be a runner. So what you do, and the Giants are getting a lot better pass rush this second half. You rush to a point and you take the inside because you're not afraid of him going outside. Cedric Jones takes the inside and boom, Trent Green takes it to the outside. But you come in this game knowing that this guy's not a running quarterback. Yep. You don't have to worry about it. You can be reckless on your move. You can take inside pass rushes, but Trent Green has taken advantage of them when they've done it. Justin Watson. Watson gets down to about the 31. 28 17 the score Trent Green. Now, these are just some of his runs here and again this is because the the giant defenders didn't think that one they didn't think they had a tackle but didn't think they had to stay in their lane. And Trent Green is looking for those things and of course he you know got one touchdown out of looking for those but it's not bad for a quarterback to run but the ending is usually yep. ugly. Yes it is. It looked like he got kicked in the side on that last run. And he's already gained 56 yards. Yeah. Here he is. Here comes the blitz. He throws and passes incomplete. 
I tell you, the Giants have made some adjustments yeah. at halftime with their defense. I think part of it is just getting up emotionally a little, and the second is putting a little more pressure. That time, they brought their linebacker, Mike Barrow. You know, and this is what they didn't do the first half is, is just knock them down. I mean, you're not always going to get to a quarterback. You're not going to sack them all the time, but you have to hurry them and you have to knock them down. You can't let a quarterback come out of a game with a clean uniform. This is the second half only. Look what they've done. Sacked them twice already. Hit them a couple times. They are putting a lot different type of pressure on. Third and six. This time he has time and he has Bruce incomplete. And no interference, no flag. Seahorn back with him. Yeah, Jason Seahorn is doing a pretty good job. He was worried, you know, about the contact. And I don't, I don't, you know, it's not a running game, so all he has to do is play more like basketball, just just cover. Here, Isaac Bruce gets by him. If that pass would have been thrown out a little more, that would have been a touchdown because Isaac Bruce had a step on him and, and he had to wait for that ball. If he would, if Trent Green were to throw that to the second pylon, the back pylon, that would have been a touchdown. Here's Jeff Hall from 50. He missed from 47, but he had plenty of length. That might hook in there, and it does from 50 yards. 31-17. Strong candidate trying to catch it and put it away. Thirty-one seventeen. Okay, now that thing's the moon. What's this thing right I, here? I, I'm told it's Saturn. Do you believe it? You buy Saturn? Well, I don't know. I know Saturn, Saturn's got rings around it. Yeah, it's either Saturn with rings around it, or it's our blimp. Is our blimp still up there? But it doesn't have rings around it. The blimp doesn't. No. I knew the moon. I didn't know that other thing. But that's Saturn, huh? No, there's okay. Okay, we got our blimp, and we got our moon. I feel better that you knew the blimp. <laughs> well, I know the blimp and the moon. It's that, it's that other thing we call Saturn that I'm not sure of. No, I'm not sure either. My information brought that to me. There's probably a lot of kids listening that are saying, how can they not know that? Well, I gave ourselves a chance. There's the moon. <laughs> I'd like to come back as a kicker on the moon. Range is limitless. Radio City in Manhattan in the background. Who knows? Enough practice, he might be there. He's close. Hey, is he close to getting in the door or getting kicked out of the door? He's in the vicinity. <laughs> he may be on his way out. First and ten at their own 34 for the Giants. And here's Tiki Barber. Out of bounds as he finds some running room. Yeah, good block that time by Luke Pettigrew. And he gets Kevin Carter, and that's the thing I was saying. Kevin Carter was stopped. Now watch Pettigrew right here. You see, he's going to get Carter right there, and then just, oh, he had a little hole, too. Yes, he did. And just took him right out as Tiki Barber ran right by him. A little hunk of jersey. Yep. Now watch Joe Jurevicius the block right there. You see every time, whoop, that's that's pretty good. Yeah. Both of them had a little swath, but they were they were blocks that broke the runner for more yards. First and ten in Ram territory. Collins back to throw it. Gets it outside to Greg Camellan, who spins away from one tackler and gets nine yards. And they don't expect a move like that from Camellan. <laughs> Look at him, he's all yeah. fired up. Here's Camella here. He's lined up, you know, in a in a bunch thing. You see, and you have two guys go inside. He goes outside. He makes a little whirl move there. Gathers himself. Makes another move, and then makes the third move. For a fullback, that could be more moves than anyone has made this season. <laughs> For a fullback, you're right. Second and short, and it's Ron Dane, and he's got some room. And Dane gets a giant first down and much more inside the Ram 30. Pretty good block again by Joe Juravicious. It's one of the things that, that these guys are doing now. And, you, and you're going to see as the ball comes out here, see they have good blocking right here. 
Dane has a little burst, gets to the outside. Now watch right there is Drew Vicious, right, making a little block right there. So you got to get down there, then just stay with the guy. Get in front of him, get in front of him, and let your runner run Illegal off substitution. Illegal 12 substitution. men in the huddle at the five-yard penalty. Still first down. Ron Dane is pretty thick. Well, and, and he's really thick below the waist. Yes. You know, I mean, if you look, I mean, I mean he's kind of heavy up above, but if you look, you know, below the waist, that's where he gets all his power. I mean, he has great, big, strong, powerful legs. Here's Collins back to throw and hit and gets rid of it. They're saying he was down. Grant Wistrom and Ray Agnew converged. Yeah, and that's a referee's job. He's right there, and he has one job, is to watch and protect the quarterback. And he was right there, and he, he, he whistled him down. See, that's the thing. I mean, Kerry Collins is so big. He reminds yeah. me a lot of Terry Bradshaw. That's the way Bradshaw used to play. I mean, you, I mean, you would hit him, and you would hit him, and he would still be standing up. He said yesterday he was down to 238. Yeah, oh, he's a big guy. He's a really big guy. I was walking out of the tunnel with him when he first Six, came to the field today. And I... Here's Barber. Stops and cuts it back. James Cameron's newest. That was Jim Fossil was telling D.J. Johnson there at halftime that, you know, that being behind like this, they they can't get into one of those run things. They have to they have to open it up now. And, and they're playing that kind of football, and they can play that for a while. Intercepted, London Fletcher. Until that happens, Collins out of the shotgun. London Fletcher's made some big plays in this second half. You remember the the tackle down there on Ron Dane in the goal line, and then a big big interception here. 31-17, Rams have the ball. See the interception here. Here's I kill you. Here's London Fletcher here. Now, if we can just start the pattern, then we'll just stop it in a minute here. And we stop it right now. We see what Kerry Collins is doing. He's throwing away from this, but not looking to this. See, he's throwing away from one defender, but you have to look where you're throwing the ball for that second defender. Trent Green gets to Justin Watson his best run of the day. He steps for about 13 yards. London Fletcher, his first career intercept, and then he had to get on the phone and talk about it. This is what it looked like from the umpire cam. Again, I think Kerry Collins was looking at his receiver, Ike Hilliard, and looking at the closest defender to him, throwing to his receiver away from the defender, and was intercepted by the next defender. Three and a half minutes left in the third. Rams leading 31-17. Green back to throw with time going deep and complete intended for Tory Holt. Right now again, let's send it back to Terry Bradshaw. Right, for game break. Thank you, Pat. Ryan Longwell lines up for a 45-yard field goal, but it's a fake. The holder hassle back to quarterback Mass hassle back 27-yard touchdown pass to rookie tight end Bubba Franks, his first of his career. Green Bay now with a one-point lead at 15 to 14 after two-point conversion fail. Now back to my neighbor Pat Summerall and John Madden. Well, thank you, neighbor. You guys are so close. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. neighbor. Wow. No. Yeah, that's nice. I get that warm feeling. Pass complete to Torrey Holt. You know, it, it was interesting. We talked about both of these teams. When they call plays, they have what they call shots. And the Rams on that play before just took a shot. In fact, they've taken seven shots in this game. They haven't completed yep. one. But you still get some good out of it. I mean, yep. you test your pass protection is what you do. And then, and then you make them think deep. And you get them off. And you get them, you know, always think, then you can hit those things in front of them. They had one perfect one. Nas Hakeem that he just dropped. First and ten. Trent Green drops. Pump fake. 
Another shot, and that one's open. Bruce one works. Touchdown. And it's against Jason Seahorn. That was a matchup. Jason Seahorn's been doing pretty well all day. Yes, he has. Isaac Bruce has kind of been relatively quiet. You're going to see here's Jason Seahorn again, given a big cushion. Isaac Bruce has great speed. He just runs right by him. And Trent Green that time will let him out in yep. front. And I think there was another one that he had Jason Seahorn beaten and Trent Green didn't get the ball out there. But Trent Green's laughing. This is becoming too easy for him. It really is. And they make it look so easy. Now, I still say it goes back to, to pass for I mean, I mean, great receivers and they run patterns and they have speed and quickness well, and all those things. You gotta have time. No, but this line is doing it today. 38-17. Rams lead. You know, to me, this is what it's all about. Is the is the pass protection here? The job. You know, they only have five guys in there, extra back helping now. But look at the time that Trent Green has. I mean, he's back there, has a perfect pocket, and he could not only throw that ball deep, but before he threw it, he could give a pump fake. Mm -hmm. Goes back, has time, pumps fakes, and then throws it deep to Isaac Bruce. And again, the reason you can do that. Is because the offensive line, and here's the best offensive lineman, Orlando Pace. And look what he's doing. I mean, he just gets his guy and just keeps him out, has a little chip there, brings him back in, and Cedric Jones is still on the line of scrimmage. So the Rams move further ahead, 38 17. Every time the Giants get closer, the Rams answer. Levingston on the return again. Looking for some place to go, and this time he can't find it. Doesn't quite make it to the 20. Next week, it's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader beginning with JB, Terry, Howie, and Chris on America's favorite pregame show. Then the Lions take on these NFC East leading Giants, plus the Cowboys battle with Baltimore and the Ravens' stingy defense. They upset Tennessee today. And other regional action. It's all right here on Fox starting at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific next Sunday. Check your local listing. We'll be in Baltimore next week, right? All right, all right. Never done a game there. Oh. Mike Hiller steps out of a couple of tackles, gets a giant first down. He's had a good day. There's the guys they just haven't been able to get there. I mean, that's, you know, we talk about. The offensive line of the Rams and the opposite of that is the defensive line of the Giants and they just haven't done it consistently to print Rumble. Barber got it back. He lost it and hopped on it. One of the things that Mike March was worried about is is can he play four wide receivers five wide receivers empty backfield Trent Green not being a mobile quarterback can he do that and his pass protection hold up his pass protection is really held up the throw is out to Tiki Barber leaves his way for a giant first down you know the Rams realize and have discussed and so has Trent Green discussed with us and with others too, I'm sure that the Rams can't keep both he and Kurt Warner. No, and, and the guy, and they were talking about that in a pregame show today, and there won't be a quarterback controversy here. Kurt Warner is the Rams quarterback now. Kurt Warner is the Rams quarterback the rest of this year when he's healthy, and Kurt Warner is the quarterback of the future of the Rams. So if they're going to lose, and they probably will lose one of their quarterbacks next year. It's not going to be Kurt Warner. It'll be Trent Green. Mike March was very, very clear about that to us last night. Yeah, there was there was no question. There was no hesitation. There was no doubt. And I don't know how much discussion there could be. Actually, Trent Green is a year older than Kurt Warner. Collins throws. Mitchell catches. But I'll tell you, after watching Trent Green today, I would take him. I mean, there, there's, yeah. there's, there's probably about... 
I don't know what 20 27 28 teams out there will say well yeah yeah if it doesn't fit in your system because of your salary cap and all those dumb things they have now he'll I'll make them fit in mine well, that would be two weeks in a row he had over 400 yards last week here's Collins and then down he goes that's Leonard Little as we're approaching the end of the third quarter. Leonard Little, they moved him from linebacker, and he was a linebacker who used to pass rush, and now they just list him as a defensive end, and he's their nickel defensive end, and he can raise havoc with you. They'd like him a little bit bigger. That's the end of the third quarter with the score of the St. Louis Rams 38, the Giants 17. Fox NFL Sunday from New York will continue after a word from your local Fox station. Pat Summerall, John Madden back at Giants Stadium where the Rams lead the Giants. Uh, that's something different on the sideline. Well, these are knowledgeable fans, you know, and they, they, and, they love, and they love their defense and they they love those types of games. But when it gets away from them like this, they get bored quickly because they know that they don't have a team here that can score a lot of points in a short period of time. At least he was reading the New York Post. Two days Again. old, though. Let's go back for a game break to Terry Bradshaw in Los Angeles. All right, thank you, Pat. With Green Bay leading 15 to 14 over Tampa Bay, Martin Grammatica lines up this 54-yarder. It is good. Tampa Bay now takes a 17 to 15 lead. 54-yarder is the second longest of Martin Grammatica's career. Let's go back to Giant Stadium and Pat Summerall on a guy I would have loved to played for, John Madden. Oh, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. What? He called me. He called me neighbor. Oh, well, but, uh, yeah. That would have been great. Hey, you know, you don't hear much about that kicking ball anymore. Did you see Gramatica yeah. kick that long one? Or yep. Remember when they first put those kicking balls well, the in? They were all kicking like it. Yeah. The Rams out of their own end zone. Justin Watson gets out to about the four. A little bit of room. Sam Garns made the stop. Remember, this is something that happened. Last year, when they changed to that K ball, the kicking ball. Well, you look in 1998, the percentage was 16.3 of touchbacks. Mm -hmm. And then when the first year it was 10.1, right. and then this year they're coming back as 12.1. What it means is you can't kick it as far as you can a used ball. Frank Green gets it out. To James Hodgins. Oh, we got some action here. Yeah. Look at Isaac Bruce. He's just looking at the, What are you guys doing? Yeah. There's not a lot to Isaac Bruce. No. There's a lot of person there. I mean, but, but he's he's one of those guys that you know can just fly and and we talk about. You know the Rams and, and having speed, but they also have quickness. And like I said, they, they have great and all those things that they have are exemplified by Isaac Bruce. He's going to be a minister when he quits playing pro football. Here's Trent Green back in the end zone, going deep. He's got almost had Tory Holt. Dave Thomas got back there with him. If he had a little bit more of your arm. He threw it about 60 yards. And if he had a little bit more armor, he would have thrown 80 yards. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's it's something that you know they say the Rams and they're not as good as they're not as quick on grass and they're gonna get them in here in New yep. York in the weather. If you have good players, the field has never won a game. You ask them, they all say they'd rather play on grass. I think that's one of the things that was fun to talk about on talk shows, but yeah. in reality, that's all it is is talk. The Rams surrounded at the midfield. Rams leading at 38-17 in the fourth quarter. 13 minutes left. The enchanting music of New York City. That looked like Times Square. First and ten. Collins back to throw it. Loops it downfield. 
intended for Hilliard. And he had a couple of steps. You know, one of the things that, yeah, that was one of the things that Jim Fossil said last night that you know it was going to be so big that they had to win the battle of the turnovers and and in that first half those were two first mm -hmm. half turnovers that they gave this is a second half turnover here but you know, the Giants just don't have enough offense to lose a turnover battle like this Collins chased out of the pocket and thrown down by a blitz by Dexter McQueen now they brought two defensive backs on that one, and, and that's the thing. This is a Bud Collins influence. I mean, Bud Collins is one of those guys. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, Bud Carson. Bud Collins. Bud Collins. Harry Collins. <laughs> Bud, Bud Carson. But anyway, Bud Carson is is one of those guys that that yeah, likes Bud. to change up the defense, likes to you know bring guys, likes to you know blitz and and then and then lay off and then come with a blitz and not let you get comfortable he got a terrific track record with Pittsburgh with the Eagles everywhere he's been yeah there's there's probably in the history of the league you know you take the Bud Carson the uh, Bill Arnsbarger yeah. uh, George Allen Buddy Ryan is mm -hmm. definitely in that category there's been you know five or six of those guys that have been in it for so long and are so good at it and they stay good at it forever and I'll tell you when these players talk about Bud Carson it's darn near with reverence isn't it it is it really is certainly with a lot of respect Maynard to Oz Hakeem fumbles it makes the recovery breaks through a couple of advanced tacklers and gets out of bounds at about the 38 37 where the Rams will take over 38-17, they lead. The telecom blimp, the SBC telecom blimp, those beautiful aerial views courtesy of that blimp. Piloting the SBC telecom blimp is Captain Terry Dillard from Orlando, Florida. First and 10 Rams at their own 37, Justin Watson. Spins and gets a foot. You know, we're saying that you know Trent Green, uh, you probably won't be with the Rams yeah. next year. Won't be their quarterback. But look at these numbers: completed 63.4 percent, 1,200 yards, 12 TDs, 12 touchdowns. That's a career. Three interceptions and only three and a half games. But again, there's the guy who's going to be the Ram quarterback. Kurt Warner. What a year he had last year. I mean, that's and what a start he had this year. Hakeem a... goes in motion wide right, comes back. The pass is deflected. They're trying to set up a quick screen to him. Yeah, they did. You know, they always get a lineman out in front. Ryan Tucker, right tackle. Watch Ryan Tucker here. This is what tells you it's a screen. See him how he misses his block, then comes right down the line, and he's going to get in front of Akeem, mm -hmm. but the ball doesn't get to Akeem. Deflected by Strahan. Second one, he's knocked away. That's that's what's tough. When you pull your tackle, it's it's tough to to throw a screen to that side because usually you cut the defensive end. The tackle cuts the defensive end to the side of the screen. Look at there comes the blitz. That's Ricky Cole doesn't get the first. That's the type of thing that they had to do this whole game is 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 they let Trent Green get way too comfortable. And you just watch here now they're saying okay enough of that and they're and they're bringing you know two guys deep and you know hitting him as he throws the ball and not getting a first down. This is just going to be a little too much too late. Two defensives in at about the seven and a half, and that's where the Giants will go to work. 10.42 left. 38-17 ran. Next week, it's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader, beginning with J.B. Terry, Howie, and Chris on America's favorite free game show. Then the Lions take on these NFC East-leading Giants. Plus, the Cowboys battle with the Baltimore 
of Raven and their stingy defense. Other regional action, it's all right here on Fox starting at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific next Sunday. Now again for a game break. Let's go to Terry Bradshaw. All right, thank you, Pat. One of the upsets on the day. 49ers hosting the Chiefs. Jeff Garcia bootlegs around the left side. One of two touchdowns rushing on the day. Over 240 yards passing. Chiefs go to three and eight. I mean, Chiefs go to five and five, Pat. San Francisco to three and eight. Now back to Pat Summerall and John Madden. Boy, that, the 49ers are amazing. Jeff Garcia is amazing. They can put some points on the board. For Jerry Vicious, incomplete. You know, someone was telling us yesterday, it could have been Jason Seahorn, that they think that the best quarterback wide receiver combination right now is Jeff Garcia and Terrell Owens. I don't, I don't know. I'd buy that, that one. Well, you know. That's it would, not bad. It would be hard for me not to pick some combination of Rams. <laughs> I mean, yeah. would, you know, you would, uh, take, take one of these quarterbacks with any three or four of these five receivers I think would be pretty good. Yeah, I'd have a I'd have a hard time bypassing Isaac Bruce. I would too. Here's Collins. Juravicious makes the reception for a first. And he's down. In fact, it was, it was Jason Seahorn because he was talking about he said, you know, Juravicious is a big guy. Joe Juravicious. He said, but Terrell Owens is a different big than Jervis is, is a different big. Well, I mean, I mean, he's muscular. I mean, he's yeah. thick and he's he's just a big man. Here's Collins back to throw. Across the middle, drop by Barber. It was there with room. You know, I'm not making an excuse for Tiki Barber. He doesn't need it. But if you look at his right hand there, he has a, a broken thumb, and he has a cast on his on his right thumb. And again, I'm not making an excuse for him. That's just a Point. He broke that thumb a couple weeks ago, and uh, he said it was really painful last week. And uh, you know, it's feeling better this week. And again, not making an excuse for him, but just pointing out that he does have a cast on his broken thumb. Collins from the shotgun. The handoff is to Tiki Barber. The draw play works. Barber works. Close to midfield. Well, you know, he, he looks good running the ball, yes, too. We were talking about earlier, Oz Hakeem and Tiki Barber has some of that same thing. And, you know, the Giants need that. I mean, they've never had anyone that, that scares you. I mean, who do you have to worry about? Who does a defensive coordinator have to double? Who do you have to do those kinds of things to? And Tiki Barber is probably as close to that as they have. Underneath, Tiki Barber. A couple shy of the first down. The clock's running, however, with nine minutes, ten seconds left, and the Rams leading 38-17. And there's that group sitting in their same position. Tucker, the right tackle. Timmerman, the right guard. McCollum, the center. Newton, the left guard. Collins, the left tackle. He Mitchell. Giant first down inside the 35-yard line of the Rams. There's, uh, we were talking about Bud Carson and the defenses he's built. How about the offensive lines that Jim Hannafin has built over the years? Yeah, you remember those Washington Redskin lines, and before that, the lines of the Cardinals. Yeah, wherever Jim Hannafin is, they, they have a good group. Touchdown, Giants! I kid you. Uh, he threw that in there, didn't he? Good catch too. Hilliard was hit and kept his balance. Not a lot of cloth in there between those eights. No. There's not much to I kill you above the waist, but he gets in there. And I remember when I talked to Jason Garrett in the preseason, and I said, How are the receivers here? And he said, I really like I kill you. Those eights were stretched a little uh, wider when I wore it. <laughs> <laughs> a little more cloth between yeah. the eights. Yeah. Pointing to those ribs that he took a shot there, yeah, he didn't did. it? Yeah. Now he's so for the extra point, which is good. It's 38-24. This is the kind of game, though, you don't want to get into with these Rams because you don't have as many guns as they got.
here the Golden Knights the Army parachutists they came here to this game a yeah. different way than uh, most of the other people did didn't they? they sure did in a way that I would never come here Tony Horn on the kickoff return still on his feet now down You wouldn't do that? No, heck no. I mean, I wouldn't have done it when I could have done it. I sure as heck wouldn't do it now. And I don't know anyone that would do it. Look at that. I know somebody to do it. Who? Our producer, Bob no, Stinner. No, no, he do it. He'd talk about it, but he'd never do that. Look at that. And they land right in the middle of the field. I think you and I might hit a little harder than that. Oh, yeah, there'd be a big old divot <laughs> down there. They'd, <laughs> they'd find some stuff in yeah. that one. First and ten. He swings it out to hope. Here's a double right oh, here. Can't you see that? How in the heck do they do that? Can't you see that being you and me? No, I mean they, they, they come out and they come down so far and then uh, land so lightly. I think you always work. You know, I mean, how do you know when you pull that cord that the thing's going to open? And then if you well, pull you the got other some one, backup. Yeah, but how do you know? Sometimes backups don't work. Well, yeah, when you feel it. Then who packed know. the parachute? Do you pack your own parachute or something? I would. I guarantee you I would. Or someone else pack your parachute? Well, no, I pack my own chute. <laughs> That's Justin Watson. Another fight. This guy looks like. Uh, he can pack who's ever shoot he wants to. Yeah, he looks like he's looking up where he came from. How high was that again? <laughs> Interesting. It would be crazy to do that. Third down for the Rams. You know, the Giants are playing defense now like they should have played in the first half. I think that they played the first half uh, uh, too conservatively. I think the Rams are not playing offense like they did in the first half. Well, right here they are. For Bruce. Behorn gave him a little nudge. Flag on the play. That's right in the area holding. of offensive holding, too. You take it or you want the ball? No, I would, I would, I would, I would think holding. I would turn it because they need the ball. Offense. Penalty has declined. Okay. Ryan Tucker. Uh, because, you know, they need, they need multiple scores now, so you don't want to let them have another play. You want to have them punt the ball to you. They'll get the ball with 6.45 left. Tiki Barber returned his first one 16 yards today. They Standing need back at about the middle. Not the best kick. Hits a couple of people. Scramble, the ball's out of bounds. Flag goes flying. Another flag. A hat. Another flag, a hat. got to get this sorted out. Everyone get away. Let us think. Referee's the last one in there yep. and they all tell him what they have. Bernie Kukar. Bernie Kukar is a referee in the white hat. That one guy, he got a lot of stuff. I mean, he has guys out of bounds. He has his flag on something. Yeah, look, look like, explain. Could be Howie's cousin. The haircut. They go the same barber. And the biggest Howie. Howie, no. Howie was one of the biggest guys that I've ever known that didn't look like a big guy. He looks big to me. No, but he doesn't. But he doesn't have those big guy things. I mean, he has good features and not big guy features. I don't know how in the heck that makes it. Here's old Robinson. He's a tight end now. He was a defensive lineman for years. Mm -hmm. Rams made him a tight end a year ago. Got a couple of big passes for him, Jeff Robinson. Now they use him as a third tight end, a blocker. The ball is bouncing. Illegal batting. Hit the right player. The receiving team. See, Tiki Barber is going to come in there and bat the ball out of bounds. Yeah, he does. He can't bat it out of bounds. 
You can pick it up, you can carry it out, but you can't bat the ball. Well, that's only part of what's going wrong. Oh here. no, no, we 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 got multiple oh, things sure. here, right? We got illegal batting. Stats. We got file that away. I think there's a bean bag. You see in his left hand there, he yeah. has his bean bag. That's the third thing. You throw the flag, hat. Illegal bean bat, bag. 21 on the receiving team. You got that. We'll assess a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the bat, first down. From the spot of the bat. You don't hear that called a lot. I'm surprised that's not one that came up in an old Raider game somewhere. So many of these rules. Well, now I can think yeah, of a Raider yeah, it game. It did come in, but that ball was was kicked by a. You see, it was touched by a giant too. So Tiki Barber has to get that ball out of there, or had the Rams recovered it, mm -hmm. it would have been their ball because it did touch a giant. All right. Hit a Ram player as well. Collins back to throw it out of the shotgun. Jura Vicious makes the catch. Yeah, we talked about the Giants average in 19 not being enough, and they had to score more than that. They've scored 24. The Rams average 39, and they've scored 38. First and 10, Giants Collins again. This one sails into the giant bench. That's the way you throw it away. They run a slant, and uh, the slant's not there. You just throw it over the head. There's Jim Hannafin. He'll he'll coach anyone that comes around. That was Roland Williams, the tight end that he was coaching there. Well, the tight end, of course, has to work, you know, in pass protection with, with the, the offensive and, line. Yeah. yeah. But if you know Jim Hannafin, I mean, he'll talk to anyone. He'll oh, coach sure. up anyone. He doesn't care. He may be coaching a kicker down there in a minute. He doesn't check the number to see who he's coaching. That comes yeah. to blitz. Collins hit from behind by Dexter McQueen. And the ball hit the ground. Yeah, this is this is a tough one. When you get this backside here, you see Dexter McLean coming back there untouched. Kerry Collins was throwing to his right, and he didn't see or feel McLean coming. Kind of got whipsawed on that yes, one. I mean, he got the plan from the back, and then somebody else on the other but, side. But boom, and there's a whipsaw right there. Yeah. <laughs> Collins back to throw it again. Kevin Carter got him just before he let it go. Drew Vicious had beaten the Ram defender, but couldn't catch up to it. Yep, that's when you need the real speed. You need the guy that can get to that position and then have one more jet in him. And I still think that's what the, the Giants need is a, is a wide receiver that scares you. And when someone you can put out there, just take any, you know, take a Tory Holt, take an Isaac Bruce, take an Isaac Keem, take mm -hmm. one of those guys and put them on the Giants. No flag. Oz Hakeem let the ball bounce. It got away from him, and the Giants will down it. He better get away. Yep. Tonight it's a night of night of surprises with the Simpsons' new surprise guest star Drew Barrymore, Malcolm's birthday surprise bash, and a new X Files secret that's yet to be found. It all starts with King of the Hill next, except on the West Coast. You know, when, when the Rams lost Kurt Warner and then when they lost Marshall Falk, uh, I think everyone thought that they wouldn't be as good. And, and you can't be as good when you lose lose a player or players of those caliber. But the thing is, is they're going to be back in a couple yeah. of weeks. So yeah. I, I, I still think when you look, there's still going to be a, a real good team at the end of the year. I think it could very well be this team. When they get back for the stretch run, they're going to be awesome. Watch this. Maynard almost misses that ball with his foot. Look at it. Is it, is it, is it up in the white sock, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, almost. If it didn't. Let's see it way again. up on his leg. Yeah. Are you supposed to get that out there in your toe? That's the idea. And when you kick it with your shin? It's not going to go as far. Well, yeah, but it, it didn't. Uh, Az Hakim didn't return it. No. 
You never saw anything like that. You know, Marshall Falk right there, he gives him so many things that, you know, not only as a runner, but he can go out and play as a receiver and be as good as any receiver. Now, if you put a linebacker out on him, they're going to go to him. Forget it. If you put a corner out on him, then you have to leave someone else for, you know, for Akeem and Prohl and all those guys. So it's not only that he creates mismatches for himself, but he helps create mismatches for the other guys. Second and six. Watson cuts it back. Gets to about the 30. Timeouts taken by the Giants. They'll have one left. Dave Thomas gets up limping. Been a day of catch up for Kerry Collins and the Giants just as you've been pointing out are not built to play catch up. No and, and, and they had a chance. I mean the Rams uh, had been getting off to slow starts. I mean they hadn't been scoring in the first quarter. They've been behind in the first quarter and if that would have held up that could have been a giant type of game when they had the turnovers and then the the Rams get up these guys are tough I mean, because then they can come after you more aggressively on on defense and on offense they keep going after you I mean they get they get a lead they don't run out the clock no matter what the score no, I mean they're still rolling the bones third and three right here. The Green's going to throw it and does. Torrey Holt. That'll get the first down. Dave Thomas made the stop. Again, Trent Green really looks good. Doesn't he? Yes, he does. You know, and, and he hasn't played played a lot of football. I mean, you you think of Trent Green, and you you know he's been in the league for seven years, but this is only his 17th start. Played for San Diego, you know, and didn't get any playing time there. Then he went to the Redskins, and with the Redskins, he had 14 starts, mm -hmm. and this is his third start with the Rams. So. He's 30 years old, but has only started 17 National Football League games. And he looks very good. Dustin Watson for a loss. Those of you who watched Tampa Bay beat Green Bay 20 to 15. Welcome to Giants Stadium, Pat Summerall with John Madden, where the Rams lead the Giants 38-24. You know, it's interesting, Tampa Bay winning that game and Tampa Bay's defense. Anytime you do a game that includes the Rams, and you talk to their defense, they always talk about the way Tampa Bay played them in the championship, that championship game, game. And that's the way they want to play them, but they don't have the Tampa Bay players. That's right. Here's Os Hakeem. Down to the giant 40, another first down. Here's the first touchdown. And see, and, and just watch as you see these things, how much time Trent Green has had. And he's had time to look, to, to, to pump, and to do all those things. Particularly in the first half. Yeah. And then in the second half, the Giants changed up a little, but, but not enough. The Rams just kept going after him. And they're still going after him. Yo, 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 yo. Watson gets the carry and gets to about the 35. And the clock nears three minutes. Brent Green was saying last night, he said, Should I finally get a chance? I was injured, missed all last year, and I finally get a chance to start. And that was last week. He said, and they and they tell me Marshall Falk is out. <laughs> and he said he wanted to, you know, he watched this team and, and he's really an unselfish guy. Yeah. I mean, he, you know, he's a competitor, and competitors always want to play. And he's very aware of where he stands. Yeah, and he's you know classy in the way he handled things last year and this year. And, Understood, but, but you know he kind of wanted some of that stuff Kurt Warner had too. Here's Watson again. Cuts it back. 
and gets a first down for the Rams. Right now for a game break, Terry Bradshaw in Los Angeles. All right, thank you, Pat. San Diego Chargers hosting the Miami Dolphins. Lamar Smith breaks to the outside. Six-yard touchdown run. Six of his 69 yards rushing under that two touchdown. Miami takes it to eight and two. Eight and two. San Diego to ONT. Back to Pat and John. All right, the two-minute warning at Giants Stadium is the stadium itself is almost empty. Dang. Two minutes to go at Giants Stadium in the handoff to the Rams. Justin Watson next. It's a night of surprises with the Simpsons new surprise guest star Drew Barrymore Malcolm's birthday prize, uh, surprise bash and a new X Files secret that's yet to be found it all starts with King of the Hill next except on the West Coast that's coming next here on Fox second and nine with a minute and a half to go now. Getting in a kneel down, kneel down formation. Time. Yeah. Be good now. Be good. <laughs> be good. Be good. <laughs> That's what my mother used to say. Be good. And were you? Huh? Were you? <laughs> if, 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 if I were, she wouldn't have had to say that. You know, you wonder what That's Dick Vermeil is, is doing now. You know, the you know, he coaches him last year and to the Super Bowl and then he retires and he's you know, there's so much of him as part of this Ram team that he named Mike March really handpicked yep. Mike March who was his offensive coordinator the job that he's done and you wonder if Dick ever thinks geez I wonder if I should have stayed around another year because this group still looks pretty good this group I built I brought him here and he did and he went okay. there and set a standard and the Rams are still playing with that standard a lot of them he didn't like that standard for a while. Jim Fossil and Mike Bartz shaking hands. We'll be right back here at St. Louis 38, the New York Giants 24.